beat them in the regular season. The William and Mary Tribe, they have one of the best offensive units in the land. Led to a lot of on-field celebrations. Bay, the inside to a division a playoff spot is online. It is a beautiful fall afternoon for football in Hampton, Virginia, as the Sedgwick Hampton Pirates prepare to take on their Peninsula area rivals, William and Mary, the tribe, ranked number 12 nationally. Mother Nature must be in the mood for football. Look at this, 62 degrees, sunny, and very little wind. Welcome to Orange Strongfield, everyone. I'm Wayne Ballin, and this should be a ball game. A couple teams ranked in the top 12, nationally one AA. Mark Gray joins me. Mark, everyone's looking forward to this one, especially the folks in the Hampton area. All right, sure. Not only is this a big game for Hampton University this afternoon, it's a huge game in the history of the NBAC. You can make an argument that this is the biggest game over the last 20 seasons since Florida a and won the national championship in 1978. It, has, it will enhance the credibility of the Hampton University program. It's a big boost to the conference as a whole because if Hampton can win and go and run the table for the rest of the season. Florida a and does the same. The MEAC could have two teams hosting in the first round of the 1AA playoffs. Now for the MEAC and for the Pirates to be smiling at games, and they will have had to have done a good job of containing number four for William & Mary, Mike Cook, their talented quarterback. I'll tell you something, Mike Cook is the kind of quarterback that everybody's had trouble trying to contain all season long. He's third in the nation in pass efficiency. He's uh, passed for over 2,200 yards this season. He spreads the ball around. He gets everybody into the offense. He's a true field general at the quarterback position. As Cook goes this afternoon, so goes the William & Mary Tribe. As for Hampton, offensively, they have a bunion unit across the front to protect the quarterback and provides him with time. That's a great point, Dwayne. Six fourth over 300 pounds is the average weight of Hampton University. It's bigger than some National Football League offensive line. They want to play a ball control game in their own right. They want to use the short uh, passing routes. They want to script their first 21 plays. It's incumbent upon the big fellas up front for the Pirates to dominate at the point of attack if they're going to win this game. Pirates in the Tribe we're about ready to go. Stay with us. Kick off when we come back. The Hampton University Pirates Band setting the tone musically for this rivalry against William and Mary, coached by Lachie Cock, who is now in his 19th season as head coach of the tribe. His seventh consecutive winning season has already been secured. The third member of our broadcast team, jo Joyce Jackson, is down the field with Coach Joe Taylor of the Pirates. Joyce. Yeah, guys, some people say this game is about validation for the Pirates. We're going to talk and ask Coach Taylor, in your eyes, is this the biggest game in this program's history, and is it about credibility? Well, I don't know if it's the biggest game, but it's time to number two, number 12 team in such proximity. Uh, for that's going to get a lot more magnitude, uh, but certainly it is a strong program. We feel like we're very strong. Uh, but again, you know, I think we've been there, done that, because I think September is a real strong month for us to go down to Tallahassee, uh, you know, and win against a team like FAMU. Uh, but certainly this team uh, is very strong, and uh, it should be a hell of a point. Yeah, talk a little bit about the intensity. You guys look at revenge after losing last year, 31-6. William and Mary trying to get a postseason berth. Yeah, uh, whenever you have a strong competition, uh, certainly it's going to have some uh, some revenge factor there. But the bottom line is I think that, uh, you know, it's a situation to respect each other. Uh, certainly it's intense because uh, both programs are highly rated. Uh, and you want to, you know, keep things moving in the right direction if there's going to be a postseason play. Uh, so uh, uh, certainly I don't know if it's the, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, just really saying, uh, you know, for, you know, re revenge, but it's going to be a real highly intense football game. All right, get back to your team. Good luck today, Coach. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Joyce. A look at our officiating crew for this game. Referee Ralph Wilson, umpire Leon Jones, headlinesman George Moran, line judge Todd Reese, judge Wayne Owens, back judge Keith Washington, and field judges Wayne Randall. The tribe will be receiving the ball as we begin the second of this series between these two clubs. Mark, this game last year started with a loss for Hampton. 
If you look at the keys to this game, Dwayne, the bottom line, Hampton has to protect football. They won 17 of the last 19 football games. In the two games that they lost, they are plus a minus 12 margin and turnover margin. They have got to control the clock on the ground with their, their offensive the morals. They have got to hold on to the ball. That is the barrage. You look at the game that Hampton wins, they're plus two. You look at the ones that they lost over this stretch, you can see that it's definitely been a charity in terms of them holding on to the football. And with our chats with Coach Taylor yesterday, he told us that he really didn't have to remind his players that the last time lost in the regular season was to win and marry it. They're very aware of this. Exactly. You know, this team is going to make a run right now for the NCAA 1 double National Championship. They're big and physical in the trenches, but moreover, it raised the bar when they fell at Youngstown State at the end of the season, and they've definitely had their eye on this game. Okay, William and Mary has elected to kick off back deep in his own territory is Willie Bennett of Hampton to receive the kickoff. Brett Sturber. And we are underway at Armstrong Field. Bennett brings the ball out. And is stopped at the 12-yard line. Well, he, I think he will think the better of it when they go upstairs and look at the tape uh, tomorrow afternoon and Monday during the day off. So that brings in the offensive unit for the Hampton Pirates. Roy Johnson is the man for them. This is a fellow that Coach Taylor says he has a lot of confidence in the quarterback. Well, he's the field general. As you can see, the polished passer. He has commanded the team. He knows what his players around him can do. And he's adept at getting the job done, getting everybody into the flow of their offense. Well, Johnson, a 6'2 junior, 100 pounds on the Stone Mountain, Georgia. First play from Spring. Looking to throw. Has a man on the near sideline. Let's take a look at that match off of the line of, that we spoke of earlier. Mike Jones, Montreal Coley, Warren Broughton, Matt Willie, Adrian Wyatt. And what was it Coach Taylor talked about them? Well, they, they, they all smart. They all run good routes. They all have soft hands, and they beat you to the spot. And the U.S. Postal Service starting lineups, the offensive line, 1,500 aggregate pounds for this unit. That's a lot of Huge. flesh. Give off the left side. To Montreal Coley. Coley. Now let's take a look at the defensive unit for William and Mary Mark. This is a bunch, Dwayne, that has been inconsistent. Start a number of freshmen in key positions. But lots of guys like Grenadier who are going to have to play big and defensive back, Mike Everly, as well. And Raheem Walker is the top man on that unit. Leads the team and tackles with 84. A look at the secondary. Mike is one of the keys at cornerback. Third and one. Ball 24. Johnson looking to throw. He has it. Oh, he dropped the ball. And the man opens. Now you see, this is this is the influence of the wall scheme on, on the Hampton University offense. It's a timing rival. Slant pattern hit him right in the bread basket and got to haul it in. You know, when you're playing against a national contender like William and Mary, you got to make those plays to keep the chains moving. So uh, not exactly the best of starts for Hampton offense. So that was a third and one. So that brings up a punting situation for Hampton. Matt will now back. Gets off. Down to the 40. And it's down to the 48-yard line. William and Mary. So Hampton comes in. They're average 36.8 yards per punt this season on the net average. That's 25th, excuse me, that's 24th in the nation. But normally, what Johnson has been able to do was to pin teams back. Okay, now, Mike Cook leads the William Tribe out here. He is the third ranked passer in the nation in Division One AA. Mark, this guy is their key. Anxious to see how he handles tough Hampton defense. First 10 from the 48. Cook decides to keep it. Gets two, maybe three yards. Another interesting thing about Cook is that last week in their loss, he had a career record 52 attempts. Exactly, and that just speaks to the problems they're having running the football, and it's going to be a tall order for William Mary to run the football this afternoon. I know that was one of the gadget plays designed to cross Pirates up, but remember talking about the number one defense against the run in America and one double A are the Hampton Pirates. Second and eight from the 50, William and Mary, no score early here at Armstrong Field. Cook, handoff to Hakeem, to Hameen Ali. He picks up four, maybe five. Let's look at the William Mary offensive start unit. We mentioned Ali. He just received the ball. Osborne, talented, skilled people. Conklin. Conklin. Watch Conklin. He's a vital cog in the passing attack, Wayne. 
Open one ball on the free three. Blue and Mary trying to establish something early offensively. Cook pitches to Ali around the right side. And he is knocked out of bounds as well. 39 yard line. Well, that time Hampton is a defense that's based upon staying at home. And the end of time, I believe, is Thompson. Who just got Charles Preston that steps up, he's beating on the pitch, and that's how the tribe is able to pick up their first down. As you see, the Hampton defensive unit, the linebackers, Jamal Brooks is one of their leaders, spiritually and on field. He is definitely a man to watch. And in the defensive backfield, Kiernan Spate is a very interesting story. We will talk about that later on. Look at Brooks. This is the man that kind of surfed around with him. Cook looking long. And the man open. Touchdown, William and Mary. Wow, they set Hampton up with a nice bit of running up the middle, and then Cook is a receiver out behind the Hampton secondary, and they connect in the corner of the end for the six. So a uh, kind of inauspicious beginning uh, for Hampton. Look, the play action gets a couple people right on the inside, goes down the far side of the field. And I tell you something, that's just a great, he just outran the uh, cornerback that time. Trent Turbo, just what a tremendous catch. Rosia Austin. He has 100 yards received over his last three games, off to another good start. The point after attempt for William and Mary. Is good. 11 31 to go. William and Mary strikes first at Armstrong Field. 7 to nothing. Mike hooks up with Chris Rozier. Stay with us. MEAC football continues. Chris Rozier celebrates as he helps with the William and Mary Tribe on early against Hampton Armstrong Field. He talked about the open about how this team has been celebrating all season to the passing game, and we got a very good look at that. That was a great, great execution, a well called play, and you know, a big game, players got to make big plays, and that was a big play, huge. And it's going to be interesting to see how Hampton responds to that. William and Mary set the kickoff after the score. Brett Sturber, the kicker, back deep with Bennett for Hampton. The Pirates probably need to answer an answer quickly here, Mark. It fields the ball about the three-yard line, breaks into the middle, gets down to about 25, 24-yard line. Hampton will begin play the ball actually is on the 35-yard stop. And Weeman Mary has been having problems this season stopping the run. And Hampton is not the greatest running football team in the MEC, but they're soft enough with, with backs like Montreal. Holy. Look for them uh, to probably stay within that, that, that script right now. We can expect to see some. Uh, there's Joe Taylor. He, he's on the script right now. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not he will uh, change his play call. Joe Taylor looking. Roy Johnson getting ready to bring them. First down and 10 on the 24-yard line. Holy on the reception, that's a pickup of about four yard line, four, maybe five. And you're going to see Montreal Coley, he's a big part of the passing game all season long. Nothing fancy about it. Almost close to being a lateral. Get him outside, isolate him one on one. He's going that time against Jimmy Serrano, who does a good job of forcing him to the sideline so, his, so he can get some help, and Coley goes down. Second down and six. Hampton still trying to move into William and Mary territory for the first time. Johnson, good pass. He decides to keep it, he breaks out, he gets close to the first down, he may actually have one out of bounds. This is something that he can do, Mark. He does have the ability, once he breaks down, to move. And he also is, is smart enough that Coach Taylor had enough confidence and check off at the line. See, he wants to crank it up and go long. He looks, by himself in time, pump fake there, and he dances outside, picks up solid yardage, and he does pick up the first down. So good job. That's field generalship right there. Not understanding what you got to do to keep change moving without giving the ball. Now operating from their own 36 with the first down. Give to Michael Coley. And he doesn't get very much. This offensive line really has to establish a camp, does it not? The Willie Mary scoring drive. Plays four yards, 52 time, one, three, Rozier. That 40-yard catch from Mike Cook. That's a Greyhound, William and Mary scoring drive. And that's why Coach Taylor wants to play ball control because William and Mary probably is the better quick strike team on the field. A loss of a yard on that second 11, now from the 35. Johnson looking to go here again. There was contact, but there's a flag. Too. 
It was intended for the Mavericks. And, and the Hampton coach did a good job of allowing to get that uh, flag coming out there. But the cornerback was definitely early in making contact with the receiver, which is why that play went right. That was Jimmy Snarrow on defense for William Mary. Let's take a look at it right here. Johnson wants to get the ball down the field. See, what's happening is they're getting pressure. Cornerbacks are doing a good job of disrupting the timing routes. That time, Sarah, I mean, was a little early all over the back. I believe that's Johnson who, who uh, the pass was in for. Pass interference on defense. A previous spot, 15 yards, first down. So the hand Pirates are finally able to put together some first down. And you know, so early on here, on the pass block in the off line is doing a solid job. They're not coming off the ball enough for them to establish a run. And that's pivotal at this juncture. With 9.04 to go, first and 10 from their own 49. Down 7 nothing. Legs out in the play. Joe Taylor also told us that what he does with Johnson is he sits him several plays and allows him freedom for whichever one he wants. He has that much faith in his ability to execute. Well, Johnson is a very smart quarterback. He doesn't do things to be seen. That time, the fullback jumps off sides. Just moved before they're trying to get out of here by Montreal Coach. So a little bit of overzealousness get cost him uh, 10 yards. Fullback moved early on that play. There could be also some anxiousness on the part of Hampton in this ball game because they weren't so to tone for that loss last year. Exactly. You know, they put a lot of pressure on themselves. Seen a blown coverage in the secondary. Seen a uh, player jump, beat the snap cap. Those are uh, early game jitters. If they can hang in there, weather storm, things could be all right. First 15 from the 44. Johnson rolling out to his left. He's under pressure. He throws it. It is intercepted by Mike Beverly. We get to back down to 42 yard line. Well, if Johnson had that pass back, I'm sure he would hold it. He, he, he tried to make something happen that wasn't there, and he would have been best served tucking it under and going to the See, he's got time. Then he rolls out, buys himself a little bit more time, but here comes pressure. Rolls right into the pressure that lost a dying quail into the center of the field, and Beverly just makes an outstanding play. He climbed the ladder and over a receiver that was calling him to haul it in. Great play by the six foot, 175 pound cornerback. He is a big play maker, as Coach Laycock told us before the game. Four tackles over the last four games for him. Now Mike Cook brings out the trot. They begin the operation at it's on 4-2. The handoff is Amin Ali on the left side. It's up maybe four yard lines. Mark, at this juncture, the Hampton defense has to realize it has to dig in and not let anything get out of hand. Yeah, they're, they're a disciplined team. They're a team that prides themselves on not making mistakes. We heard the term that it is an honor for teams to score against them. So now it's incumbent for the big fellas up front and the linebackers to be aggressive to start establishing that they can, in fact, put some pressure on William and Mary because if they don't stop the run, you know, uh, Cook can really get apart. 7-7 seven, seven from the 45. 7.52 to go. Cook again to Ali. He is stopped. Not much all going for him there. They kind of gets there in there on top that time. Comes a little, a little blitz up the middle. And just does a good job of making shoestrings. Well, that was a big play for Hampton's defense. Now you force William Mary into a clear passing situation, which should give the power of defensive backs uh, an, an opportunity to step up and make a play. They can make a play here because the momentum is clearly on the tribe side right now. Well, third and seven. Four, five out of the shotgun. Mike Cook operating. Looking across the middle, the pass is broken off. Marvin Adams, excellent defensive work on Adams. It was intended. They do a or good job. They do a job, pardon me, Jermaine, of uh, staying at home. This is an assignment play. The cornerback stayed right at home with the receiver, didn't bite, didn't bite or move or anything, and he's just zoomed it and zoned it on. That gives the cornerback an opportunity to, to make a break on the ball. But look at the pressure that Hampton is getting on the uh, quarterback. They have heard all the quarterbacks they faced all season long, and Mr. Good at that. That most ball might each with a punt for William Mary. The Turner is back. He lets it sit to the end zone, and Hampton Pirates defense unit. Has done its job for this series. William Mary leads seven nothing. Stay with us. William Mary tried lead Hampton seven nothing here at Armstrong Field. Capacity out on hand. Seven oh three to go in first quarter. The Pirates on the move after a big defensive series, operating from their own twenty yard line. Johnson and off. Three there. 
doesn't get very much on that. The offensive line had Todd Grenadier on the stop there. Grenadier makes tackles. That makes Jimmy Laycock. It would be Mary Yeah, but if you're having a university offensive line coach right now, you got to be a little concerned bordering on Pater because your offensive line in the ring game is not such off the ball. They're not getting after people at the point of attack. The offensive line has to set tone and establish that this is their house in the middle, and they're not doing that right now, certainly when they run the football. Johnson looking to make something happen on second and eight from the 22. Looking upfield, in and out of the hands of his receiver, Warren Button. Broughton's got a hold of that play, so we've seen it against Butterfickers thus far. Uh, first with Johnson, excuse me, Williams. Now Broughton, it's a, it's a timing route. Five step, and you look to the sideline, and this is a strike coming right at you. It's right there. The only person that has a chance at making this catch is Broughton. He's got to hold on to that thing in a game of this magnitude. That brings up third long. Ball 22, trailing 7 0. Cards need to get something going. Johnson, spread out of the pocket, but he's. He's got by Raheem Walker, who leads the team in tackles, William and Mary. Well, let's talk. Let's give a half a sec that time to coverage in the secondary by the tribe. They're doing an outstanding job of just putting the clamps on anybody. Now, he has time here in the two, three, four seconds, but then it, you, you got to give it with the time that the Hampton uses. If they get four seconds, Justin has to be able to complete the pass. Great job in the secondary by the tribe. That's why that play was scored. Okay, Matt Williams back at his own goal line to punt. The ball, was, the ball was touched. This is a live play. Touched by a really good great player. That's a touchdown for Hampton University. You talk about opening the door. That was a mental mistake by William and Mary. The ball clearly touched one of them, but it looks like it's going to go for the nine. It looks like they're going to down the ball. The officials are talking with Hampton players at the 40-yard line. They're having a small conference. It'll be interesting to see ruling on the call because the ball looked from my point like it hit one of the William and Mary players. It was still in flight. Hampton was there. See, now watch. If you look here close enough, it looks like it clipped one of those guys who had his back turned. Did it hit Kuma Lonergan or not? Is question, and apparently in the opinion of the officials. Let's take a look at it right here. Not exactly a great hit. That ball hit. Looked like hit one of those guys in the pile down there. Couldn't quite tell. There was a Hampton power down in the area. So that may in fact be ruling. So major summit meeting going on. They are conferring on this. Let's take another look and see if we can ask you to take exactly what happened here. We're the first team by group. It's first and ten at the first team spot. So the ruling is it was actually touched by Hampton University. There is thus William and Mary will get the ball. So there was one blue shirt amongst all five of the white shirts. And I guess the blue shirt touched it. So it'll bring up a first and ten for William and Mary starting their operation inside of Hampton territory. What look at one more town. There is a pirate going down there in coverage who had beaten the rush, if you will. Boy, you talk about momentum swinging. Could have been a big play now. The Hampton Park defensive unit has to dig in first and 10 on the 38. Mike Cook, play action. Look to the sidelines. Marvin is defending on play. Well, Hampton right now has got to be pleased that they're getting pressure from the outside from Josh Preston. He's wearing number 97. He's doing a good job of collapsing the pocket. Now, at that time, had enough of an opportunity to survey the field, but he had to release that ball just a little bit if we wanted to because of the backside pressure. Watch big number 97 Preston. He's got 11 sacks on the season. He is a force to be reckoned with in that defensive front. Second and 10 for 38. Cook, toss to Ali over the left side. Gets one, possibly two yard line. That'll bring up third and long. Jamal Brooks on the stop. Let, let's take a look at the at the shoot of Charles Preston coming from the blind side against the option. Now the reason he's not able to get there is because he runs into the teeth of the Hampton University parts coming from the far side that time. But that backside pressure gives you an idea of the kind of mobility that Mr. Preston, Preston brings to this defense front. Now third and seven from the 37. Out of the shotgun. Cook in the throw. He has a man. Dave Cotton. 
who makes it way down just inside the two-yard line. That's savvy. That's just a quarterback and receiver being on a same page of the book. They're in a zone. Blitz coming up middle that time. And the quarterback just sits in the pocket and the receiver comes right off the seam in the zone and it's a strike. Nice pass. Good route. Nice little stutter step move. Going to pick up a couple extra yards. Come, not the fastest receiver in the, wor in the world, but he runs a good discipline route and it picks up the first down for William and Mary. Early on, Cook for 457 yards. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. 470 to go. William and Mary on top. 7 nothing. And off to Ali over the left side. He gets through about four, five yards on pickup. Ali Habib on the a nice job mixing. And uh, William Mary here is handling the defense a little bit on the hills right now. They're able to run the all up the middle. They, this is nothing fancy. It's just base smash, mouth stunt. Get a little trap action up the middle. Let Ali pick his seat, find his way. Does a good job of running low to the ground. Second and six. 16-yard line. The Vikes are looking to prevent a 14-point deficit in the first quarter. Cook has a man. I'll open the corner. And that should be enough for another first down or very close, Mark. This is where Hampton's unit, which has bent some this year, but basically not broken, really has to stiffen up. Well, this is just a quick swing pass to get the receiver, excuse me, the running back outside. Let, that's basically a sweep, except for down in the... In the uh, in the statistics sheet as a uh, interception, but that's basically a sweep. Get the receiver, get the running back outside, let him pick his place to run, and he gets a good yardage for another first down. First and goal from 9 3 0 9 to go. Cook again rolling right, looking inside to keep it, but is stuck quickly. That's a heads up move time by the quarterback. Will Turner comes up from his first safety spot and makes a stop right there. But again, there was nobody to throw to. He didn't try to make anything happen. He gets to the outside. He knows he's dead right there. He's just going to tuck in and takes the punishment, but they keep possession. William and Mary is one of the best teams in the nation inside the red zone. They've been inside the red zone 36 times this season. 28 times they've scored a touchdown. This is a precision unit inside the scoring area. Second 12 from the 12. Across the middle. That reception. Mike Leach falls it in. Let's take a look at this one. Nice protection for here. Yeah, and he just looks up, picks his receiver seat, check. This was probably about the third receiver in the route. He came high at the last minute coming across the middle. And he really got a ball at the way William and Mary is mixing the ball up right now. They're, they're going up the middle, running plays. They're passing on slants across the middle. And, of course, Mr. Leach is second on the team in reception. So he's just as effective in the pass game as he is in the game. You mentioned their zone efficiency. So they're okay. 36 trips inside 20 this year have resulted. And score. Defensive play by David Turner, who stops the short run. And Hampton is to show that it is not going to give way to the end zone. Quick. Well, they stiffed, and that was key. You know, throughout the season, Hampton has been a first quarter team. This time, the defensive front, a little bit of blitz action pressure coming the outside. That's Preston Reek. Uh, Preston Reek needs some half havoc there. Opens up a slot up middle for the linebacker to come through and make the stop. So it's a big play. Hampton has outscored the opposition coming into this game 76 7 for the season in the first quarter. That brings on Brett Sturber to a 10 field goal to make 10 0. It is good, and William and Mary comes away with three. It is now 10 nothing. Tribe over the Pirates. Stay with us. William and Mary Tribe lead this one 10 to nothing here at Armstrong Field. Hampton Pirates, a very good defensive stand, all things considered in that last series, Mark. Well, they had to. I think going down 14 points to a team, the offensive five that William and Mary had would have almost been devastating. Hampton is the type of team all season long that's gotten out in front and then kind of let the defense dominate for the remainder of the game. And now we're, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not they have a comeback type of offense. Willie Bennett back to receive the kickoff from Chris Derber. Give it about the one. Breaks to the middle of the field. He's going to be corralled down about the 22-yard line. John Farrell with the tackle. 
That comes down for the offense. The receivers have got stepped up, step up, make some catches. Now it's going to be interesting to see. Coach Taylor had a couple of drives now. Uh, on his chart is the, the script of 21 plays that he wants to open the game with. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not the Bill Walsh disciple, if you will, uh, break from the norm. The Greyhound scoring drive, eight play, nine plays, 34 yards, fourth to five, and serves 20 yard field goal. William and Mary, 10 nothing. First and 10, Captain, ball 23. Johnson trying to get them going. He gets the mouthful, Coley over the middle, fights for about three yards. They have to establish some sort of dominance along that front line to get things going, Mark. And really right now, the bigger offensive front of Hampton University is having problems with quickness up front of William & Mary. William & Mary's done a good job of taking the first block at the point of attack, and as you see, by, the, by those guys up front holding the defensive line, it's allowing the linebackers to come up in good defensive position to stop Hampton running game. That brings up second seven. Ball on the 25. Trail Scott motion. Johnson finds Williams who gets down to the 48-yard line of William & Mary. That looked as though caught the truck off guard, Mark. It caught, it caught, it caught, it caught us off guard as well. Hearts on the move when we come back at Armstrong Field. Capacity crowd of 11,000 here at Armstrong Field. Mark, the Pirates finally on the move with that last play. We'll take a look at it. We get in the second quarter. First and 10, Hampton operating for the first time in William and Mary territory at 47. Justin back. He's under pressure. Decides to keep it and steps out of bounds. He's chased out of bounds. Let's take another look at that play. You know, we were talking yesterday, Joe, around about play number 13 on uh, Taylor Swift. This being a trickery, and maybe he went to his back on Halloween. Montreal Cole, he like he's going to sweep, comes out, fire, fires a strike to the former quarterback, Matt Williams, who hauled in. That was a big offensive play for Hampton, the first significant chunk of yards they've gained offensively this afternoon. So I wonder what other kind of tricks or treats, if you will, on this Halloween afternoon that Coach Taylor has in his playbook. We'll see. No gain on the previous play. Johnson quick across to Matt Williams. Hauls it in near the 44-43 yard line. Well, the championship quarterbacks have a savvy about them, and that's what Royston had. He bought himself some time, avoided sack on the previous play. Here he sits in the pocket, goes back to Williams one more time. His receiver who had a touch of butterfingers early in the first quarter. He comes right back to him and delivers right. So instead of for long, it's reasonable. Reasonable being five yards on third down, ball on the four line. Hampton needs to get into the end zone. Johnson appears to be calling an audible. Going to go to the air. Man. Latrell Scott. Check that. That's Warren Broughton. Warren Broughton. Uh, Warren Broughton. Coming across the middle. This is what you call giving your body up, team Dwayne. Nice time, great protection for Johnson. And bang, a strike, and he takes a shot, but he hauls it in. So it absorbs punishment, and the Pirates pick up a key first down. Ball on the 32-yard line. Hampton, the crowd, begin to feel a little something. Maybe in the air offensively. Johnson, the quick handoff, the action went nowhere. William and Mary not at all on that play. And it's a no pickup. And again, they're being at the point of attack, a quicker and smaller a defensive front. You see, nobody knows a block there. They get too much serve. The defensive line is taking all the pressure off the linebackers because the linebackers don't have to avoid any blocks. See, look, no, no, the linebackers are already in the backfield by the time the runback gets the ball, so consequently, it's a recipe failure. Green Walker was on the stop there. He's not easy to run at. Second and ten. Johnson. Well, to his left. He's in trouble again. He throws it. It is intercepted by the Sonny Cam who brings it down to about the 19-yard line. William and Mary. So Hampton appeared to have it going and once again snaked him by a turnover. Second bad decision, Boy Johnson. He gets outside. He, he was just in trouble from the start of this play. No, no excuse for this. He got some time. It comes a little bit of pressure, but you throw that ball away. If you're not absolutely sure you complete that pass, you gotta throw that ball away and and and, and keep position for your team. We talked in the open. It was key for Hampton not to turn the football over coming into the game. They're minus 12.
Hoffman for ratio in the last two games that they've lost. They're minus two this afternoon. And Willie Ramirez has four six turnovers so far this season. And Hampton, of course, we remind you last year, lost to Willie Ramirez. There was turnovers in that game for the Pirates. And again, I think it on it early on. You talked about our players in big games trying to do a little bit too much, trying to play outside themselves. You admire the competitive nature, which is probably Roy Johnson's greatest attribute that he brings to the offense. At that time, discretion was certainly the better part of value. Matt Williams here to be shaken out on plays down the lines. Mike brings the try out. First and 10, operating from on 17 to 10 nothing lead. Cook going to the air. And he has a man on the far sideline. Okay, here come. Come on once again, this is just a nice play by Michael. See, he's going to roll outside, but this is something you can't te teach. No pressure that time. They get good protection by himself and time outside. Then when he gets out there, he makes his decision. He loops above and in front of a linebacker in between two defense backs. I'll tell you something. You can't teach that stuff. Either you got it or you don't. And that's an outstanding individual effort by Cook. Another first down for William Murray from the 34. Cook once again looking to go through the air. He has time to throw. Loops. Rush. Has Hamid Ali, but the ball is awaiting him. Defending play, Deion Hunt. Well, I tell you, Cook did a phenomenal job of avoiding the rush. He had pressure from the backside at the middle. Does a nice little pretty well. And a hurt up to get to the outside. And then threw the ball into double coverage and gave his receiver the only chance that he had. He was the only player on the field at the time who could play. Look at this move. That's something to make for Ronaldo Nehemiah. Lost it out there in flat. Only person who had a chance to catch that ball despite two defenders in the air. Running back. Again, look at this. Get a holding call in this defense. Let's take a look at this holding on the Pirates. See, look at the time. He's looking out field. He wants to make it long, realizes there's nothing there. Dances to the outside. Watch this hurt job. That's the good stuff right there. Then he collects himself. And nice touch pass in between two defenders with the, the quarterback. Who was the, the quarterback was the only one that had an opportunity to make the catch. Jimmy Laycock has to be very pleased with what he's watching for right now. Ben Ali on first down. Out near the 50 yard line the 49. Ben Ali on the carry. David Turner, David, David Turner on the stop. Laycock is an interesting situation. 19 seasons here. He's a winning coach in school. His remark. This is the seventh straight season where he will have a winning record at season's end, so he's done a tremendous job. Look at that, 120 wins in 19 seasons. I mean, that speaks volumes. You consider that he's recruiting like places like North Carolina and Virginia. He's doing an outstanding job. And doing the job for him right now is his quarterback, Mike Cook, 75 to the 49s. Last line. Lake Cox, 1970 graduate of William Mary, where he was starting quarterback for a uh, gentleman, Lou Holtz, at the time. You mean the TV guy? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, coach, Lou Holtz. But Laycock told us early that he didn't know what kind of defense that should show up. As offsides is called, he's Hampton right now. That's more yards will be marked against Hampton now. The Pirates now, Mark, have to guard against letting this get away from them mentally. It is still a of football that we played this afternoon. But when you've got the kind of defense that Hampton has, they're one big play away from getting the momentum back on the side. And now those big play guys like Deion Hunt or, or Jamal Brooks is going to have to step up and make play right now. You know, Donald Turner's back there. He's he's one of the better uh, interceptors in the MEAC. Somebody's going to have to step up if you're on the Hampton side. I make. But again, if you're William and Mary, fan, you've got to be extra pleased with the offensive flow, the play calling, everything that they reach into their playbook to play call thus far is worth Second and one, 46 for the first down, 11.28 to go in the second quarter, and William is on the move with the lead, 10 to nothing. One thing Joe Taylor harped on about this and talked about was he wants the defensive unit to stay home and maintain the look at I tell you, you're not going to last long when you're running into Deion Hunt. I mean, he just took a dive, that was a play call, but you're asking your quarterback to absorb a lot of punishment, and much like a boxing match, you take those shots early on, but then you end up putting the ball on the turf well, when it really counts. First down from the 44. Again looking to go to the air. Deep dig down the sideline. The thing on the play. Kiernan Spade. Hey, it was intended for Chris Rozier. Rozier was the man who scored the touchdown early, but Spade is an interesting story. He was the only member of that Boston College team who uh, was not an employee and he transferred to Hampton. He does a good job. This is just great cover. You know, he gets his hips around and he's just running stride for stride with the receiver early on. But Spate does a good job keeping the receiver on the outside, forcing it out of bounds. So if that play, if the pass had been completed, it probably would have been for no game anyway. We'll talk more about Spate.
league leader. Interesting story. 11-01, second and 10. Ball on the 44. Cook up shotgun. Cut it off. Amin Ali, who has lots of room, but makes his way down to the 25-yard line of Hampton, where he's stopped by Donald Turner. This is not good when your defense acts began to make that. Well, this is a good job of field jumpship. See, they suck him in. You know, Preston gets on the inside. He bites on it. And once the pass completed to Ali on the outside, it's nothing but green pastures in the first down and big yardage into the Hampton secondary. You see what I'm talking about, Dwayne, in terms of the mix. That's why Hampton has to take this uh, time out right now. I believe this is a timeout call by Hampton defense coaches because they got to make some adjustments. And we'll talk about it in greater detail when we come back. Jimmy Laycock and Mike are talking about it. Hard thinking about it. They were with us, Willie Mary. We are back at our home field, 11,000 capacity crowd here to watch Willie Mary and Hampton. Hard faithful, a little concern now as they're in and blue are down. 10 nothing to Willie Mary, which is on the move at the 25 of Hampton. First and 10, Mike Cook. Hands off to Amin Ali over the left side. He is pulled down after a game of about one by Jamal Brooks. Brooks did a good job that time. A plane off the block to get into backfield to make the play. It was critical that time. Hampton is a tremendous run defensive unit. The damage is being done by the short passing game, which when it is effective is just as good as a solid running game. It brings up second and ten. Been married. Cook across middle. That's Dave Conklin. That's going to be close to another first down on the stop. Dion Hunt. Which having his way running solid discipline routes. So nothing fancy here. Great protection, but a little crossing route. It's a five yard route. It's a quarterback friendly route, which gives the receiver it's a high percentage pass, but it gives the receiver op opportunity to maneuver into the secondary. And as you can see, Conklin has handed, excuse me, uh, pinned back near the goal line, but they has has William and Mary knocking on the door once again. So started waters for pirate defense this year. I don't think that there's any offensive unit that's been able to dominate them, frankly, the way that William & Mary. William & Mary's offense is really dominating in this game right now. Well, the Pirates are not able right now to contain Mike Cook either because so far he is 7 of 10 for 118 yards. They are not getting the job on him. They're hopping his passes. He's getting the ball quickly out to his receivers or running back, if you will, in the flat and just letting them make plays for him. There's been some doubt on the field. If they're conferring, we'll hear from them. Yes, they're making plans. Too much time taken off of the clock, so they will adjust the clock. This scoreboard is absolutely beautiful. It's all part of a $1 million renovation to this beautiful field. And they actually just put this scoreboard up yesterday. And, and it's beautiful. I marvel weekend long coming in here and looking at the transformation of this of this beautiful stadium, which has always been, in my opinion, the most picturesque scene all of Black College football for a football game. But you look at the improvements that it made. It, improvements of the stadium kind of mirror the improvement of the overall university program. Big time stadium, but big time school. President Harvey makes a big commitment to the football program here. And Joe Tish very happy about that. 31 on 16. And Cleveland Mary appears to have a first down. Well, see, well, that's the difference between the offense in front of William and Mary and the offense in front of Hampton right now is that they're getting surge at the point of attack. This is nothing fancy once again. He just takes it on the top. But look at the center right there. See, he's drilling me. Look at Hampton. The defense in front of being pushed back. And that's a big reason why William and Mary's offense is operating on all cylinders right now. When does fatigue began to be a concern? Now with Hampton, you know, they're probably the most physically conditioned team in the MEAC. That's just, you know, execution and dominance at the point of attack. First and 10 from the field, Amin Ali over the right side. He is tackled about the 10, 11 yard line. So they continue to move ball, and they actually are attacking the teeth of Hampton's defense now. You know, William and Mary has nine downs this afternoon, and many of them, and they come in a variety of different ways. They've gone up top deep, they've gone up top in the intermediate areas, then you've had a couple of times where Cook is taking dives across the middle. A little short, they're mixing around. Run up the middle, then you run off tackle. Nice game plan, good bit of play calling at this juncture by Jimmy Laycock and staff. Second and six. On the yard line. Again, Ali, who was down in the backfield. 
Like David Turner read that play all the way. Turner's been stopping people all season long behind the line of scrimmage. It's about his 12th time that he stopped somebody behind. He just somebody blew an assignment, and that allowed the all in me as he candidate to get to the backfield and make a huge play. Huge play for Hampton, and an even bigger one coming up right now. Third and long, great red zone efficient team. And William and Mary, can Hampton deny him getting the ball in the end zone once again in this contest? Lost four on the play. Leach was in motion. Cook. Overthrows Cotton looking for the end zone. Defending on the play. It was Marvin Adams. So once again, Hampton's defense is being tested. We've got a down in the green goal. And you see all those marks on the, on the helmet of uh, Deion Hunt right there. Excuse me, David Turner. Those are skull and crossbones. Those given to the players who make big plays and have solid units. They're, they're team war kind of things, you know. They, they set certain goals defensively, and every time they hit one of those goals, they get a skull and crossbone for their helmet. Well, the player down on the field appears to be Mike Cook, the quarterback and the leader for William & Mary. We'll check his condition as William & Mary leads 10-0. We'll be back in Armstrong Field after these messages. Duran Pope. Rebecca here at Armstrong Field. The down player is Mike Cook, the starting quarterback for William & Mary. Duran Pope is the backup. He would be the young man who would have to come in and play as a 200-pound sophomore. He's also the holder on field and point for attempts. But you know, Hampton has been a notorious season in putting great quarterbacks on the They got the Patrick Bonner and Mike Moran early at Florida A&M. They bruised and battered Ted White in the victory over Howard. So Mike Cook joins a long line of bruised and better quarterbacks this season by this vaunted Irish defense. Well, Cook is up, walking off under his own power. Fourth down and ten. He's a football player. He'll be back. Brett Dirk on for a field goal. Gotta watch the fake in a situation like this. 21 yard attempt. Bends but does not break. 10 nothing. William and Mary leads the Pirates. Still have some life. We'll be back at Armstrong Field after this. Welcome back. The tribe is leading Hampton 10 nothing. We're here on the bench. A tribe quarterback Cook. He gets the helmet to his left arm. And the trainer we talked to him says he has to reevaluate it to see if it's sprained or not. But they're not sure right now. This moment he could be back in the game soon. Back up here. Okay, Joe. Thank you. Look at Mike. He is definitely their leader. Off to a very good in this game for them also. We talked about big plays stepping up in big games and making big plays. And Cook has made all the right moves early in this first half. So Roy Johnson brings the Hampton Pirates out trailing 10 nothing. First and 10 from. They're on 27, 22 to go in the second quarter. Johnson looking to throw. He had that open. Touchdown, Hampton University. Warren Brothers all the way, catching his land across the middle. And the Pirates do have life. Well, you know, talked to Joe Taylor yesterday. He spent some time in camp. The Bill Walsh in the West Coast offense. This is the simple snap pattern that takes Jerry Ross a Hall of Famer. Brown runs a diamond route. Five steps up the set up. He looks for man, steps up, buys him a little bit of time. And slant pass, he catches him in stride. And it is off to the race. He stopped the high stand and going to bad stuff in the end zone, young so Great touchdown. Great play. Great execution. And a huge touchdown for Hampton back in this game. Now went after. It is three point deficit for the Pirates. Now 10 to 7. 7 0 to go. Hampton on the comeback trail. See, Roy Johnson just aired it out, and he catches the receiver, brought him right stride, and it's just nothing short of unadulterated speed, which is the difference. That's why DJ Alexander, the quarterback, is left in the dust. And, and brought him. And look, look at Johnson's reaction. I got my man now. He's got it. Go, baby. Go, go, baby. Go. Oh, yeah. That's the point. Touchdown. We're right back in it. Broughton actually is their big receiver, too, averaging over 25 yards. Okay. That's exactly what he's doing all season long. And then a ball control team goes up. They want to just nickel and dime and move the chain. But they go up top. And really, they force momentum of this game. 
just suddenly swung to the blue and white side. You've got the into it now. You've got the fans into it. It's suddenly become a whole home field advantage for him. It was definitely solid in here for the balance of the first half until that play. Well, AC went to fit the kicker for half and the fun. Kick off Kumla Lundgren deep in his territory. There's going to be new life here on Strong Field. The cards have gotten on the scoreboard. Lundgren field in the end zone. Decides not to bring it up. That'll bring first and ten from the 20 for William and Mary. Well, now the defense for Hendon. Go ahead and see his man the game. It's interesting to see whether Mike Cook uh, hits the call. And he's I've not seen number four there. It looks like number 12 is coming. Now here's Mike Cook now. He was just conferring Jimmy Laycock before he onto the field. So Cook is back in. And the Pirates are back in the game. Well, one thing about it, he's back in the lineup, but anytime he sets up in the pocket, he's going to be thinking about the shot that he took. So he's back in the lineup, but he's definitely got it in, in the back of his head that the Pirates defensive front can get to now. Laycock probably wants to widen this crowd a bit. Cook, let me go to the air again. He's pressured. He was knocked down by Harry Curnell. 6'3", 265 pounds, sophomore. So the Pirates defensive unit getting to assert itself. Football, such a game of emotion that time. This is, we're going to see whether or not this was in fact a full pass or a lateral. Because here comes the pressure from the back side. He plays off block initially and just has a complete line to the corner. And ladies and gentlemen, that ball is a lateral. It was behind the line of scrimmage. And fortunately for William and Mary, it is uh, it goes out of bounds. But boy, they dodge a huge bullet time. So Hinton, despite two turnovers and not getting the benefit of any risk in the first half, find themselves only down by three. And that really as well if you're a Pirate fan. Should be a surprise that William Mary is going to the air more considering Hampton's proficiency with stopping the run. Allowing the 60 yard per game on the ground this season. Second 10 for Mike in the tribe at the 20-yard line. Up by three with 50 to go on the hand. Cook, short pass to Chris Rozier who gets down to about the 30th line where he is occupied by Travis Coleman. Here's a look at the Greyhound scoring drive for Hampton. One play, 14 seconds, 8 yards. That is efficiency in 80 yards from Braun. Well, you can ask for anything other than that. You talk about efficiency. How about that last play? A little outside the road. He takes about a 3-yard out pattern. He turns it into a first down. Just his toughness alone. William Perry now with the first down. Look the handoff to Mean Ali over right side. He has one room. He gets it to the secondary on the sidelines. And is knocked out of bounds by Donald Turner and Marvin Adams. A big game on the ground. Just finished speaking about what a good job overall Hampton's this unit was doing in containing the run. And William and Mary sprints play like this. Well, this is a situation where disciplined defensive unit is burned by the very aggressiveness. You see, no surge at the point of attack. The back gets to the court. And then it's just a first down. He finds another gear. And fortunately for the Pirates, they're able to run him down in the secondary. Again, a sweep. See everybody to the inside. That, uh, that lead open the Japanese notes. Good speed. First and ten now from the third six. Cook. Back to pass. Dropped off. Pass. Mark Adams defending on play. Scott Osborne was the intended receiver. Look at the band-aid on Cook's arm right there. He is really flexing that left arm that Joyce told us about that was banged up. And it's going to be interesting to see how much discomfort that is, caught, is going to cause him as the game wears on. To this point of the drive, he seems no worse for wear. Still like cognizant, making good decisions, being helped by the fact that Ali is on the ball effectively as well. But it's going to be interesting to watch how his left arm leads into the remaining contest. Second down. Corey Nesmith over the right side for William and Mary, where he's stopped by. Corey Nesmith on the carry. We're going to watch the man in motion clear out for this right play. Take the defense with him, and they're going to come back right behind that. See, he, he cleared everybody out. So he trapped play to the side, nobody out there. But fortunately for him that time, there are a couple of defenders in place, most notably on Hunt, to make that stop. That brings a third down for 31. Once again, Hampton's defensive unit has the counter for Joe Taylor. a good play call, a blitz from the right angle at the right on that time. Nice jump. Got hold to it on that time, but uh, let's see. Okay, this is going to bring up a four down. Look like there would be another one of those summit. Watch the blitz. He just steps on the inside. Look, coming out of the right side of your screen. Bang! And he bangs right into that arm. He was peppering that arm right now of Cook. And look at his... 
How you like that? That's the salute. This is the Armstrong Stadium salute. He knows this is going to make a Bronco difference because Mike Shanahan and Joe Taylor are two good friends. Fourth to five, ball 31. William and Mary Gawthor. Bottom 10 seconds. Cook that. And that's a short to take off. But there is a flag in the second. We have some holding here. Hold on for one second. But that ball was clearly short on the collar. And Joe Taylor is asked why, and so am I. It was Ferris on Hampton. So that breathes new life into what appeared to be a dead series for William Mary. I'm anxious to see this one one more time. This is quite interesting. That pass, the uncatchable ball, number one. Now watch it right here. He'll come right across the middle, focusing totally in on Conklin across the middle, and... Wow. Boy, I got... Mm. That brings up Tough call. automatic first down for William and Mary. You see, the ball was... I, I didn't see the hold, but he's got... Joe Taylor, not at all happy, questioning the timing of that call. It was, it was, it makes a very good argument. It was a very late flag and a questionable call at best. So William Mary comes out to the 20 yard line. Chris Rozier in motion. The drop off to Dean Ali, who breaks the tackle. And is knocked out of bounds by Dion Hunt near the 10 yard line and also a flag. Well, it's going to be interesting to see the, what, uh, what's called here because this was a flag that was thrown in secondary and thrown off a late once again. Okay, so now this time they've done the favor and the home call is on William and Mary this time. And there's Coach Taylor. Not exactly in the best of boots right there. So a replay of first down as Pirates lose some yardage on the Well, let's see if we can get this uh, holding call out here. Nice little pass in the flat. That was a block in the back. So it may have been a block in the back. And there's some holding right there at the very end. Got to keep your hand inside the shoulder. At, inside the shoulder. See, in the front of your screen. He's being held right there. The, the uh, defensive back for Hampton Donald Turner is being held. And that's why, that play, that's why we have a penalty on that play. 27 to go in the half. 10 William and Mary operating at the 20-yard line. Hampton. Michael to Ali, who is quickly by uh, Dion Hunt. Team. Coach Tim has to be pleased to see Dion Hunt, his dream linebacker, all in the AC candidate. From what I'm hearing, all virtually a lock for the all conference this season. And a lot to leave the offense coordinator in the plays. It's going to be interesting to see the defense can step up and keep Virginia, excuse me, William and Mary out of the uh, end zone. Second and eight on the 18. Lee wanting his defensive troops to really hold for him. Looking for Rozier. Looking out of his hands, Mark Adams defending on the play. Tremendous at that time by Rozier. Nice touch pass time route. That's your missing post corner. And you break to the goal post and then hit to the corner of the zone. And a nice touch pass that time by Cook. Gives his receiver a wonderful opportunity and a solid defensive play. Great. Alonzo Lee's reaction coming up right here. The defensive coordinator for Hampton. Make it, make it, make it. Yeah, baby. Gotta love it. Good job, young fella. Well, Coach Taylor said he wants his defensive unit to remain home. Cognizant of their assignments. Third and eight, ball on the 18. Cook out of the shot from William and Mary. Looking to the end zone again. There's no one there. It was the same tight play defending on play. Kieran Spate, it was intended apparently for Kyle Henning. And Coach Lee, once again, likes that play. Spade is locked up at 101. Apparently, they're, they're feeling confident. Let's the instructions. Look it. Take away the middle of the field, I believe. He's what he means by that. But again, apparently William and Mary has seen in the game plan or something that they can stay. They went after him early, he was burned for the touchdown, and afterwards, he's done a marvelous stop in cover. Brett Sterberon attempts a 35 field goal for William and Mary. But it is good, so the try go up 13 to 7. Hampton and William and Mary doing Atlanta Hampton. Stay with us.
Brand new, beautiful basketball arena here. The Convocation Center on the campus of Hampton University. And the North Carolina Tar Heels, one of the teams that will be playing in this building this year, Mark. That's one of the deals where, you know, you go to Carolina, they schedule a game in hometown. This will be for uh, the Ronald Perry game. But again, Hampton's pointed. They're going to be like the third best, according to many of the Ulster's team in MEAC this season. And you can bet that uh, when the leaves change and, and the trees are fully undressed, that uh, the Pirates are going to have a lot of hot nights over in Convocation Center. Beautiful facility, 7,200 feet. 13-7, Brett Zimmer is preparing to kick away to Willie Bennett. Short kick. Going to make it only to about the 35 yard line. This will bring a very good field position for Hampton to get things going on this series. Well, exactly. Now, they should have been able to stretch the defense. And what I mean by that is when you connect and you go up top, you make the defensive backs play a little softer, you make the linebackers drop a little deeper, and that should open up, should I say, open up run game. But the bottom line in order for you to be effective running, the big hogs in the middle have got to get up the blocks a lot, and they've done those bars of the running game time. So, first 10 from the 27 for Hampton, trailing by six. The camp up middle. Point. What happens is when you're playing a little soft with the backers, it opens up the quitters. It's nothing but basic draw. Guys a little bit later coming off the blocks at the point of attack because they got hurt on the last defensive play. And then the big fullback is barreling over people for the Hampton first down. Yeah, with the big pickup on it. First 10 for 39. Some look to go to the air. He's looking up sidelines. In and out of the hands. Of Mondro Foley. They got the running back out in flat, deep downfield, lock one on one. And you really don't want your running back in the passing and have to climb ladder and try to make catch. But that's what Hampton does in this case. Johnson gets a lot of time, steps up, buys himself a little bit more, and a strike delivered over the cornerback. And Coley has a legit shot at that catch, but he handled it like a good running back does. <laughs> Second 10, ball on the 30 yard, 39 yard line. Look at Johnson's reaction. Oh, just missed. Coming back to live action, Johnson has Coley short pass about a four-yard pickup. Coley did make a catch at Mark, so you should be happy. Yeah, he, he, he dinged himself. That was a good, that was a nice safe quarterback from the kind of pass play where you get the ball to the back of the flat and you let, let him do his thing. Again, there's the Walsh influence on Joe Taylor's offensive pl game plan and then play call. You take the short pass, get it to your talent back out in the flat and let him maneuver much like Roger Craig was able to do on many of successful San Francisco 49ers. And brings up third and four. Mayor set back. Johnson has changed the play of the line of script. It didn't take too much time in doing so. But as I look to my left, I see two seconds remaining on the play clock. Well, the official, unfortunately. Right, first man, first start, on the offense, five yards early, third down. Ball start against Hampton, so a replay of the down, bringing up third and long now as opposed to third and short. <laughs> now we know what we got. Third and nine for the 40. Look at the block. Chris Stahl and Karima Mayer going at each other a bit. Johnson steps in pocket. Under his right step across field, trying to move the pressure. And he is run out of bounds. About the 36 yard line by Raheem. I'm shocked didn't see any Tim longer Engel. that time. He was running towards the sidelines, and normally they protect the quarterback when it gets close to the sideline to the officials. And Wingray dodges a personal foul bullet, if you will. Look at Roy Johnson. See, he really wants to force this ball downfield and make another one of those mistakes that have plagued him early on in his contest, but he's smart this time. No, nothing can pass. Nobody's been dancing to the outside, avoid sack, and Hampton can punt. So far, it's all Matt Williams back to the punt.
Now let's check down on the sidelines with Joyce Jackson, who has a special guest. Joyce? Thanks, Wayne. One of the things that's going on right now here at Hampton University is a bold $200 million campaign spearheaded by uh, President Dr. William Harvey. Tell me a little bit about this $200 million campaign and where you stand with it. Well, we're very fortunate that we have already raised $102 million, but the next thing is going to be the heart. What we're trying to do is to make a great university greater. We're talking about curriculum enhancements for scholarship for students to obtain and retain the best faculty available to make our world-class music even better. So what we're saying is we're daring to be great because $100 million is a lot of money, and we think that we can do it with a lot of people. What are some of the ideas you guys are kicking around as far as fundraising goes? Well, we've already had a wonderful opening. We were, uh, last week, we opened with a um, uh, black tie game where we raised $375,000 student uh, scholarships. We obviously are looking at corporations, foundations, individuals, and those who believe and really educate in the key to progress in this country. Talk a little bit about how this campaign is helping athletics. I understand that Armstrong Field is part of this campaign. Well, what we're doing is renovating Armstrong Field. We have a... Um, stands. We put a $300,000 scoreboard. We're going to uh, provide some uh, lockers for the young men, some office for the coaches. We have turtled the field, which means that it'll aid in the drainage. All of these things um, are helpful in that regard, but also with the student scholarship. That's going to help with uh, the scholarship for the athletes as well. All right. Thank you very much for stopping talking with us, Dr. Harvey. Very bold campaign. This is the type of campaign that no other black college or university has taken on. Hampton University is doing it. We wish them good luck. We're back up to you. Chris Rozier on reception. First down for Weaver. Well, that was a good Hampton. This drive didn't start well for them. They, they suffered a personal foul penalty, and that gave William and Mary better in position. And we apologize because we um, a little plug on Dwayne. Well, I think I'm back with you now. First and ten on the, on the 40 yard line, and William and Mary in Hampton territory. Mike Cook out of the shotgun. He has Dave Cotton, who's knocked down by Marv Adams in about the 30. Three yard. is not the fastest, nor is he the most physical, but he's one of those pesky kind of receivers that just runs good routes, finds the open area, and if you hit the ball anywhere near him, it's kind of like a V-Five. The ball just sticks to his hands. He makes all the plays for him, and he's just a good possession receiver who, who's helped him certainly this afternoon is just keeping possession and moving the change. And he's, of course, second school TD receptions list 22. Second three, ball on the 33 now. Ali over the right side has running room before he's knocked down by Donald Turner. I'm amazed that they're able to run the ball with this efficiency. The best statistical running defense in all one play. It's a little half the sweep and he cuts it back inside the tackle and the guard. He picks up huge yard. Fortunately, Donald Turner is out there to haul him in. This time it's Corey Nesmith over the right side and again attacking the heart of the hand defense and getting a considerable gain of Jamal Brooks on the stop. And that time, back pays for him. I mean, he is almost decapitated by Brooks when he stopped. Look at him. Looks like he has open area and then Brooks ball. Oh, man, Brooks and Turner combined to do a great job. Donald Turner grabs his leg and slams him to the turf. So hard running and tough physical stop by him for the defense. And Coach Wider's got like that. Now he's got to find some answers. Put something ahead to uh, stop the running game. The running attack is surprisingly effective with these hands right now. And then, of course, Jimmy Lecock has got to feel right now. He's got the mic. Every Everything that he's calling thus far has worked to perfection. It's not been a situation where the Hampton defense has really been able to stop William Mary from what they would do. What they've been able to do is keep him out of the end zone. Well, last year's victory, remember, Cook was very effective against Hampton. 243 yards passing and three touchdowns. Let's take a look at the first down. William and Mary with the advantage, 15 to 6. That suggests control at the line of scrimmage. That it also it clearly illuminates the fact that their offensive line right now is doing a much better job and establishing the point of attack there. His Hampton. Second and third, 16. That was intended by Mike Leach. That brings that up third and short for William and Mary. They're doing a good job is William and Mary clearing things out to allow the receivers to come across the middle. That time he get a running back to the flat and he just dropped it. You know, we talked about Joe Taylor and the San Francisco influence, his offensive team. You look at what Jimmy Laycock does in clearing people out and letting the backs come across the middle. A short intermediate route that reach to the West Coast offense philosophy as well. William Mary inside 20-yard line, 50% today. 
Touchdown, 141 going on the half. The team, seven, William and Mary. Third and three to get the odd right around the right side. Picks up the first down and is tapped by Donald Turner. Well, Joe Preston is going to take the bar. He's going to think about what Coach Taylor told him and to stay home. Look, he's just simply turning. He goes, takes an inside route, and goes to the outside. That's the reason that William and Mary is able to pick up the first down. First and goal, 10-yard line, Ali. In for the touchdown over the right side. That was a precision drive, the try. I mean, they mixed it up. They went to the intermediate pass game. They went to the out route. They got back to the flow. They got the running back run to the inside and to the outside here. Watch little Ali. He wants to go inside, gets it to the outside. Nice little step, step. Hits the accelerator and grows the end zone. So Hinton, who had the momentum after the 80-yard touchdown, has seen the loss it once again. He actually took Deion Hunt into the end zone with him. And that, that's no tall order. A six yards, 13 attempts. He is the school's lead rusher, as you can imagine. Actually, just goes 89 yards. But after the clip, is good. It is now William Benary on top, 22-7. The drive beginning to assert itself somewhat. 120 to go in the second half. William and Mary can take seed as they are on top. And the Hampton's defense has been pushed considerably in the first half. Well, we talk about key adjustments. That's the adjustment that Hampton is going to have to make. They're just going to have to find some answers. Uh, it's a situation where Jimmy Cock is doing a good job. It up. They're taking Hampton the pressure by using the blitz, and what it's doing is leaving defensive backs and take these positions where they're in one-on-one, -on -one. and frankly, the skill players of the tribe right now are making plays. But of course, when you talk about what Hampton has to do, they're going to do a job up front offense, and they're going to have to find and get some pressure from the defensive front. And the line is they got to cut down on the run game right now. The run game where you've been married is eating up huge chunks of yardage, and that's got to be pleased to Coach Jimmy Lecock. He appears very confident and calm right now. Brett Sturber with the off. Okay, this one is short. Look at it, has it. The 30 breaks up the middle and is brought down at the 37 yard line. Look at the Greyhound scoring drive, eight plays, 71 yards, 109 with time. Ali, a 10-yard touchdown run. Ali, an interesting young man. He was state high school sport champion in Delaware and had a background as a small child. He spent a number of years in an orphanage, and he's managed to make the most out of his young life today. Talking about making the most out of a drive. You go 70 yards in a minute and nine seconds, that's certainly getting the most out of your offense. Brand. Roy Johnson breaks up and out first to 10 ball on the 37. Pirates need to get something going offensively. Down 27. Johnson, early pressure, decides to keep it, pick up first down, and gets out of bounds. It is escorted out by Tim Engel. Rather brutally <laughs> escorted out of bounds. But again, good job of field generalship. You know in a situation like that, that your receivers are going to get a cushion. And if they're picked deep downfield, it gives you a whole lot of field to run. And that's what Roy Johnson does at time. Solid heady for that time. Still more than a minute ago. Still with two timeouts. He gets out of bounds and stops the clock. Quarterbacks, that's key for him to stay in this contract right now. And that's been to William and Mary territory. Johnson looking towards sidelines. It was caught by Matt We haven't had a chance to talk about A. Tyatt, who's one of the better kickers in the MEAC. Joe Taylor wants to get the ball about the 25 yard line. He'll watch a little out pattern. Look at the unstrength of Roy Johnson. Not Harold did it for strength and a nice job of catching the pad by the former quarterback. And good enough for the first down. Ball 38, side 50 seconds to go in the half. This one is caught by Matt Williams, but he was out of bounds. And we caught it. Mike Beverly getting on the play. That's a good job by Beverly. Mike uh, Beverly does a good job of forcing Williams out of bounds. This is not the NFL. It can't be pushed out of bounds. Got to come down with one foot there. And that time, Beverly uses the sideline to his advantage to shut the receiver out. Matt Williams, who started here as a quarterback, actually, and uh, was moved this year to receive Done quite well in that role for Joe Taylor. Taylor saying that uh, he could have been an all-star. Johnson's high throw and overthrows his intended man. receiver, Andre Beasley, Andre was open, and there must have been a miscommunication on timing. Now, that was just a bad pass by Johnson. He's got wish he had that one back again. He had a receiver out in the flat. All he had to do was get him the ball. He was going to just take the ball down the sidelines, certainly for a first down, maybe even more. But then the point I wanted to make about C. Wyatt, his career long is 40 yards against North Carolina NT here in Armstrong early this season. That means Hampton has to get the ball to about 25 yards or about 15. 17 yards away from having a scoring opportunity. Third and 10, ball on the 38 yard line. 30 seconds to go in the half. Johnson. 
Feldman, the ball was up in the air. Jimmy Simmons defending a play one, brought in was the intended receiver. Fourth down. And that brings up a fourth down and two. And also, decision time, Joe exactly. Taylor. And it brings up a very interesting decision for Coach Taylor. I think in a game of magnitude, you got to go for it. I mean, you're at home, uh, you got a solid kicker, you got to do what's best to give your team an opportunity to put some points on the board here at the end of the second half, at the end of the first half. I like the game and the and the uh, coaches show. And look at Johnson so far 16, three interceptions, 122 yards. This. Did not look right to him, therefore he calls a timeout. 20 to 7 wants to go talk about it with Joe Taylor. 32 seconds go into the half. He probably needs to get on track. Those three receptions can play on your head. Yeah, and th those were mistakes, big time mistakes that he made, certainly out of the character of Roy Johnson. Like College Sports Day moves to BT starting on Saturday, November 7th at 11 a.m. when our on Charlie Deal with all the latest news and highlights from Black College Sports. I'm looking forward to that. And you know, that's a week from today. Lovely day here at Armstrong Field. You see the brick on the new press box. What a marvelous scene this is. And it, look, this is just beautiful. Just absolutely marvelous place to play a football game. So obviously there's got to be some serious confusion going on because Roy Johnson is a cage savvy heady quarterback. This is certainly a prolonged timeout. Well, Coach Taylor may have wanted to make sure Johnson understood what precisely was supposed to happen when they snapped the ball. You may look back at this being the biggest play of the game when all is said and done. Fourth and ten, trailing 720. Pirates with 32 seconds to go in the half. Johnson looking to the air. And he's one button. One rotten on the reception. Huge That's good enough for a first down. That's a huge play. Now we're in AC Wyattville. AC Wyattville from 40 yards in. This is a confident pass up in the pocket. A little out route. Broughton does a good job running his quarterback away from it and then cutting to the sideline. To give himself an opportunity to haul that play in. So Mr. Broughton, after the touch of Butterfield early on, he stepped up and made two huge plays to get him right back into the game. That brings up the first and 10 now. Ball at 20 yard line. Some more discussions between Hampton players and coaches. And the Hampton has just used their last timeout. So that's big. So Hampton no has no more timeouts, 24 seconds to go. So now, now the gamesmanship really again. Do you try to cross them up and run some, some plays in the middle of the field, which is going to keep the clock moving? Or do you continue to work the outer edges in the perimeter uh, to be conscious of the time? It's going to be interesting to watch how the powered offense and Roy Johnson play this game. Pirates are aware that they need to get into the end zone before the half. No quit. A lot of fighting tough at hand. Very impressed their effort. They come out of this game real early. And gritted and, and tough out. Johnson looking for the end zone. Lines for the was there, but it was intercepted by Jimmy Samaro, who brings it out. Wow. That is the fourth interception of the noon thrown by Johnson. He was looking holy, and that really was. That was a huge play. And this is the situation where he all day, he had one-on-one -on -one situation that he went and he underthrew a receiver that gave Seminar a chance to break on the ball. Too much air under that time. He throws a strike at six points. He throws a lofting pass, and it is an interception. Boy, you talk about the dynamics of this point and loss. Seminaro now, of course, with four interceptions. You see four fumbles in the game last year, but he has seven chain possession this year. He is one of their keys to the defensive back. So as time winds down at half, Mark, the Hampton Pirates walk off the field trailing. Let's check in with Joyce Jackson. Coach Lake. Coach Lake has the defense. Talk about the offense, they stop the plays and keep this Hampton defense on field. Yeah, we're all right. We just got to get those in for scores as opposed to field goals. But uh, Mike's doing a good job. He's shaking up a little bit, getting back and uh, flowing well. And we just mix the run. I just want to be able to keep up mixing the run. I think we'll be, we'll be okay. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks for stopping and talking to us. Enjoying 20 to 7 halftime lead. Back up to you. Willoughby Barry leads 27. We come back. Half highlights now. Look at Hampton football. MEAC College Football is presented by the U.S. Postal Service around the country and around the globe. No one delivers like the USPS. 
delivering so far is William and Mary on top of Hampton. 20 to 7 here at Armstrong Field. We will take them in and listen to the musical offering of the Marching Hampton Pirates. University head coach Joe Taylor has a team down right on the field, but they are not down in life. For Coach Taylor, he thinks there's much more to life than football. Look and listen. <laughs> coming together and speaking, singing, and uh, it, it creates a great spirit. And I think once the spirit is in the right place, then I think the accomplishments become a lot greater. I just think joy, a lot of excitement, I can really express myself. I joined in, I said, well, you know, this is a lot of fun, you know, being able to sing and, you know, to serve the Lord in different ways. And I think it just helped me mature because, I mean, I was a young man thinking that it was all about just party, women, and, you know, you just be head on straight, good things happen for you. It kind of helps with your spirituality. Um, because when we on road trips, a lot of travel going on, sometimes we might be traveling in a plane, come from a game, and you can't go to church on Sunday. But the gospel choir kind of helps you with your friends and keep your spirituality. These young men are very talented. Uh, they have a big work ethic. Uh, a very unified and a lot of character. We feel good that we have the kind of, you know, say, national attention, national respect, uh, and it calls us to a higher standard. We just teach your young man, let's, let's make sure that you bring full faculty to whatever you do on and off the field. But he can also brag, and we have a very good for us all. So, I mean, we understand that Taylor really loves hearing him saying he's always having his hands tapping his foot. And sometimes you might see him sing words because he's been so much. Like every choir, you got certain people that really sing, and then you have some people that carry a note. I can sing, I can keep a tune, and a lot of players, a lot of um, people in choirs think the same way. But we know that we do have some talented people in this choir, which makes us look good. And as long as we just back them up, we know that every time we go out singing, I mean, a lot of people don't join. You know, guys are bringing songs in and get different guys to sing. And, you know, we go to a lot of area churches you know, after the season to sing. And uh, we really enjoy, you know, the, the comments we get. And uh, people just love to hear a bunch of big guys sing. The university's band is joyous. Their team is down 20 to 7. They discuss how to get back on top as they prepare for the second half here at Armstrong Field. Hampton Trails, William and Mary, 7-20 halftime on this Halloween afternoon in Hampton, where the Pirates band are treating the crowd to a performance of Michael Jackson's thriller. Stay with us. First half highlights when we return to Armstrong Field. Hampton Trill, William and Mary, 22-7 here at Armstrong Field. Not the first half that the Hampton Pirates wanted along Wayne Bell along with Parker Gray. They were not able to control the line of scrimmage really either side of the ball. That's the dilemma that Hampton faces as Joe Taylor makes adjustments in the first, a full first half to come out and start the second. They got to get better in the trenches. They were dominated in the offensive front. The defensive line was not able to get any pressure without blitzing. And offensively, they have not been able to run the football. That's forced Roy Johnson to have to make a lot more plays than Joe Taylor would have him to. Let's take a look at the U.S. 
U.S. Postal Service first half highlights mark. Not a lot. Game for the Hampton University Pirates. It started when uh, Mr. Cook went to Hopkins. He found uh, PTA for 80 yards to, uh, to start, excuse me, for 40 yards to start the score. Then later on, William and Barrett gets the field goal. And then Roy Johnson goes up top. He found Brompton across the middle. He breaks it off down the far sideline. And he scores 80 yards later. It's a touchdown. Hampton seemed to be right there, there into the contest at that point. But then the running game establishes itself once again. It's Ali with a 10 yard touchdown where he carries Deion Hutt into the end zone. And that story right now Hampton trail 20 to 7 in a key ball game, not only for their program, but for the MEA. And the Pirates are now forced into a position of playing tough football. This is something that they're not accustomed to do normally coming into this contest. Hampton is the team out early, out for the opposition. 76 to 7 in the first quarter. Then they put the burden on the defense. Right now, the offense has got to jump start itself as we look at nation's back. And the stats are very much in favor of William and Mary Trot. They have control. Mike Cook has been to effectively do what he wanted to do. You see time of possession. Very much in favor of the tribe. The big stat that we talked about coming in is that in Hampton's last two losses, it be the regular season or postseason, they're minus 12 in turnover ratio. They're minus three this afternoon. They can afford any more turnovers if they're going to win this game. And William and Mary's been able to take advantage of turnovers. We'll see what happens in the second half. Stay with us as Hampton comes out ready to try and get back into it at $179. Let's check in now with Joyce Jackson. All right, here we go. Coach Taylor. Team, this is a 20 to 7. What are the second half adjustments you guys have made to get this off the line? Well, the big thing when we went inside was uh, it's not a matter of making a lot of adjustments. We feel like we're putting a stop on ourselves. We got to be able to finish the playoff. Uh, you no, know, let's raise our intensity. Let's try to fix the plays because, you know, Roy, it looks like he's having a bad day, but, you know, athletic enough to make some of those plays. And I take my head off right now to the try because, you know, the engine level is just a little bit high. What did you tell Roy? I mean, four and a step can rattle any kid. Yeah. How do you keep his head game? Well, I just told him he's been there. He's done that. He's a competitor. Uh, and competitors find, find a way to, you know, shake things off. And, uh, and he's been here for us, and, you know, we just want it. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for talking to us. Okay. Uh, the Pirates can raise the intensity level here in the second half. Back up to you. Thank you, Joyce. Back for the second half after this break. Jimmy Cox, William and Mary Tribe up 20 set on Hampton. The third quarter has been very good for his squad this year so far. Mark, scoring opponents 103 to 48. And that certainly does well for a hand the defensive unit are struggling, particularly trying to the run game where everything else in their spinoff this afternoon. That's going to have his underway. It's cool and right hand. Run the ball out. 22 yard line. He was tackled by a number of players, but there are flags on the play. Once again, late flags coming from over on the near side. Way after the play it is, so I'm anxious to see what this call is. And can ill afford any more mental mistakes. So we got so this is marked off against William and Mary and Fraction against the tribe. And this is a good start for Hampton there. Vantage point. Bad start for William and Mary from there. First run back. All the team. First team. First team. Yards, first down. That is a big, big penalty because that's considerable yardage back. Well, now Hampton's got to step up and uh, clearly go about the business of our clamp and down running game. Pirates have the number one rated rush defense in America, one double A, into this contest, and they've been chewed up as far. William and Mary beginning at the 12 yard line. Mike Cook immediately looking up to the air, but he's catched out and dropped by Harry Hill. Six three sophomore out of Charleston, South Carolina. And he barely avoided being stopped for a safety that time. Good pressure. He were on a little half roll. Cook tried to get outside. 40 right there. Gets his big knee. Looks around him and hauls him to the turf. Great play that time by uh, Hugh Grinnell, the uh, linebacker, stepping up and making a big play. And look at him. Yeah, he's hyped about that. You gotta love it. That brings up second and long and moreover, really very operating deep in its on territory. Well, Cook is such an accomplished passer, and he's so accurate. He's one of the few quarterbacks that if you coach Jimmy Laycock, you don't have you, you don't have much trepidation to throw from the end zone. Conversely, if you're at lot, you want to continue that pressure coming from the outside, from the inside, wherever. But you got to stuff him to get your off, off an opportunity to get right back into this contest. Second and twenty from the two. Ali, did he get out of the end zone? Oh, this question. Officials have not signaled any sort of ruling yet. <laughs> Charles Prince on the stop for him. Apparently, he did get out to the uh, foot line at least. Wow. 
Right. That might be a fortuitous spot. He does got the air, but look at the surge. It stops him right there and shoves him backward. So, fortunately, the officiating crew gave him forward progress because if they had stopped him where he went down, it was clearly a third and 21 for William and Mary. Operating from the one yard line. Cook in his end zone to throw out a, as a man open, but overthrows Dave Hockland defending on the play. Kiernan Spate. Spate once again, that time Hampton showed blitz, rotated into too deep area, and that time too deep, he had the double uh, double team on Hockland, which I've been recognized by Coach Lee in the defensive unit by Hampton to shut down Jim Laycock's offensive unit with it. And I'm telling you something, Hampton had golden opportunity here. They get some pressure on the, uh, the Mike here. Back in his end zone deep now. He has to get this one out. He gets off. Donald Turner field ball at the 43-yard line. Has running around the left side. And it is whistled out of bounds. Great field position for Hampton as they get their first drive. Pirates with the chance to do something in the second half. Stay with us. The campus of Hampton University, all eyes on Armstrong Field, where their Pirates are down 27 with 13.30 to go in the third quarter. Mark. Defense does a good job. Offense has great uh, field position. They got to convert here. Roy Johnson brings them out. 30-yard line. William and Mary, first and 10. Fully in motion. We give to Andre easily around the side. And you see that run play has no chance to stop because again it appears that offensive linemen are having to, have to just have their feet stuck in the mud. They're not getting any surge, they're not driving anybody, not using that you know, 1,500 pounds of aggregate weight to make anything happen at the point of attack. So the run game still can't be established. Negligible two-yard game play. Second eight, ball on the 28. Coley and Lott, now motion. Karima Mayer on setback. Johnson looking to under pressure. That's a man. Warren Brock was out of bound, 15 yard line. Coach Taylor showed confidence in Roy Johnson with Joyce at halftime and comes back out and gives him an opportunity. He stays with him. You know, it makes a mistake. Now he gives him a nice, safe quarterback from route and Bruff runs a nice little out pattern to the near sideline. Gives his quarterback a great target and he hauls it in. Now Hampton is once again City Wideville. 20 yard line, first down. Ball in the 15, Chad. Appears that Johnson has just called an audible and changed play. And it's Matt Williams across the middle. Mike Beverly, a number of other women Mary Blair getting him down inside the 10. And when your running game isn't working, you gotta move the chains somehow and they go with the control passing game. They start out, first they go to Brofton, now they go to Johnson, safe pass, nothing fancy about it. Little square into the center of the field. He hauls it in, and now it's second short. Coach Taylor is, I like what he sees right now from the way Roy Johnson is playing with a lot of confidence in the pocket, you know. A few INTs like Johnson has and really get inside the head of the quarterback. Competitive nigga Johnson has him coming right now. It's a Coley around the side on second and two. He is into the zone. Hampton Pirates early in the third quarter. He couldn't have scripted a better start to the second half for Hampton University. They pin William and Mary. They get a good punt return in William and Mary territory, and they efficiently score a touchdown. So now that the moment has come back onto the side of the field of the Pirates. Coley cuts inside, hits the jet, tiptoe down the sideline. Yeah, baby, I'm in the end zone. He knows his Pirates are right back in. Seven yards by Coley. Now the point after to make it 24. Point after is missed by A.C. Wyatt. Another look at the score. Montreal Coley takes the ball into the end zone and Hampton is in seven. William and Mary, 2013 up, but Hampton just scored. However, could have been 14. A.C. Wyatt, somewhat the jet on the field now. He had problems last week with this. Yeah, he, he came in during the season and pointed out the touchdowns. He had one block last week. This time, he just takes one. A huge miss for Hampton, but fortunately for them, they're only down by uh, seven points, so he can convert and it should still be a target. But it's totally out of character for A.C. Wyatt to miss a point after the touchdown. And here's the kick. Ball is 
12 back up to the 18 yard line. Look at the great on scoring for the pop. Four plays, 30 yards, one minute laps. Coley with a seven yard touchdown run around the left side. Hampton right back in the contest. The defense is established to be a force on the first drive. Now they got to maintain that same level of intensity. However, if you're on the offensive side, William and Mary want to get Ali back involved, get a staff to run in game one, and they were so effective in controlling the clock and keeping Hampton's offense. Ironically, Hampton's big play has had the bigger of the big play offenses this afternoon. First and 10 from the 20 for William and Mary. Looking to throw ball, he drops off. Mike Lee has and picks up the first down. Well, this is a play where they take advantage of the aggressiveness of this defense. A big number 97 for Hampton, Charles Preston, he's sucking. Just a little simple corner pass, a little pass out to the running back in the flat, and he does the damage on his own after he hauls it. Nice play call, safe play for a cook. Jimmy Laycock. And that advances the ball to the 38-yard line for Willie and Mary, where they have another first down. Tosses to Amin Ali over the left side. Goes back up. Breaks the tackle and is knocked down at about the 47-yard line. Well, he paid for the gain of 10 yards, but again, Hampton is being victimized by the very thing that's their strength. Staying, in, uh, staying at home. Gamble right here. See, you got to stay at home against the option. Guys gamble to try to take the pitch out of Cook, and that allows Ali to get to the outside. He cuts back here, then he's into the second area. At that point, stick right there. He tries to bounce away from him. Look at this shot, man. Ali emerged as the starter at go back for Jimmy Cock just in preseason. Just the most impressive in the world for Jimmy Cock. This time, it's Ned Smith right up the middle, attacking part of the Hamptons to unit. That's a first down. Well, if it ain't, don't fix it, Dwayne. You just stick it. If you run, ain't running the football, even if I'd have in the third pass in America, you keep the ball on the ground. Hampton might have paid so much attention preparation to stopping the pass that they're just opening up huge chunks of yardage on the inside, and they're dominating the point of attack. The offensive line is just, is, the Hampton off defensive line is really getting pushed back, and then a good job, William and Mary is bringing them in for running backs one after the other. Laycock is putting Ali and Nesmith now. Ali now the long step back. He gets the call across the side. There was a flag on the play. But he's corralled down the 36-yard line by Harry Cornell. Let's wait because there is a flag. Yes, yeah, they're thrown in a general area where there's only some holding. Anxious to see this call. Holding against Min Mary, a break for the Hampton Fox. But really, Min Mary is very effective right now in platooning Nesmith and Ali in the backfield. And you know that perfect oh. compliments on the offense. Ten yards. It sounds like uh, you're in fresh place. Hampton's defense is so big and so physical that they can wear down the undersized back this William and Mary had. So, Coach Lecox, that's a bit of a savvy on the sidelines, recognizing that you can't have your star back. I'll take as much punishment. 25, three hits a game. So, what you do is you bring somebody in to share some workload. So, hopefully, it's fresh legs when you really need it later on. That's up. First down, 46. Penalties. You saw there. Killing Bolt. Killing Hampton. 50 yards and penalties for each team. Laycock, clearly not happy about that. Things definitely heating up. Coach Laycock is off the jacket. <laughs> First and 10, ball to 46 for William and Mary. Man in motion is Mike Leach. Pressure's on, but he drops it off and gets it to Ali, who picks up. About 10, 12 yards on the play. And you see, once again, that's an advantage of the aggressiveness of the Hampton defense. They got a sense that they could get to Michael early and continually try to pepper him. And what he does is he takes advantage of the pressure. See, that's just a sick pass. He releases the ball to the back of the flat, and he's just like the running back does damage after he catches the ball. There's nothing fancy with that. You know, you just you, you convince the interior lineman when they're back there that the quarterback is going to take the ball. He just releases it, and there's no fence out there. Back in the flat. Ball now in the 42-yard of Hampton second. And six for William and Mary. 57 to go third. But Cook looking long. Dave Cochran, he has it. And he is out of bounds. Marvin Adams on the, on the fence. And Adams has the right to beat that because Cullen was able to play with a shove to buy himself much more space to make the catch. Great pop presence that time. Cook, and look at the last minute. You can't see the loose, heavy arm that he put out there to beat himself that much with the difference in that pass being he completed. The savviness of this senior receiver is just unbelievable. He is just, he's so smart with things that he does. Easy, savvy kind of stuff that frustrates quarterbacks. And with the effectiveness of the run game, it opened it up so Cook to make the connection to Conklin up. That's the first and eight. Rolling right and spots 
Jackson being wide open in the end zone. Chris Hoosier for the touchdown. Willie Van Mary answers back. Yep, and that's what they will do. They'll come back and they'll hit the adversity head on their floor. But the Mary has been on the door. Remember, this team came into this game having scored 28 touchdowns, 30 and 36 trips inside the red zone. So sooner or later, they kept knocking, they were going to get in. Nothing fancy. You, the reason that this place works is because the play action sells everybody because the running game is good. That opens up the city outside and Roger Hall's in his second tee after the afternoon. Rozier with 100 yards receptions in the last three games. Point after by Stubber is good. And William and Mary. Answers the touchdown. 27 13 from up top of the park. 27 13, William and Mary on top of Hampton. Jimmy Lock has his team right where he wants them to be right now. After he came in, the second half was four. His tribe come back. If Mike Cook on control gets the Michigan zone for the score. Well, there's a saying that in, in, in football, you get your, your opposition town, you gotta hit him in the head with sledgehammer. Hampton kind of left the door with the mix, mix extra point, and that seemed to like give William and Mary a, a new lease of life, if you will, because they came out with a confident offensive series. Nice job mixing, you know, Play on mixing the soft passes, taking advantage of the aggressiveness of the Hampton defense, and then you know, you keep knocking on the door inside the red zone. Think like William and Mary to get in. So, once again, burden of proof for squarely on Roy Johnson and the Hampton University offense. Red Derbers kickoff is fielded. Willie Bennett into the end zone. He will not bring it out. Hampton will be operating at 20 yard line. The Greyhound scoring drive. Six plays, 81 yards. Time elapsed, 146. Eight yard touchdown pass to Roger from Cook. Well, now Hampton has got to, by the way, I still am of the contention that they're not going to be able to win this ball game unless they learn how to run football. I got to figure out a way to get the running game on track because the defense is struggling, stopping with Mary's offense. They got to do a better job ball control to keep them off the field. Kareem Mayer, who is now the long set back as Coley goes to the slot. First and 10 to the 20. Johnson with the pass. As Warren Brown, a pickup of about 11 should be enough for us down. Now, Washington Ice is not fancy of Brown. He just breaks it up. That's discipline. You know, you recognize the cushion, you break it to the inside, you give your quarterback a safe target to complete pass, and that's what Brofton has done that series. Well, done that play. Right from Stone, up in Georgia. First down, 31 yard line. I've been trying to stay with William Mary. Give is tough to this corralled by Raheem Walker behind the line of scrimmage. Boy, you gotta really, really, really be upset with the amount of assignments. We're blown on that particular play. I don't think anybody in a blue shirt could watch anybody in a white shirt. Here's a major collision. Defense and defense right there. Beneficial to Anthony, excuse me, to William and Mary. Raheem Walker, just an outstanding talent and a huge game. His four straight double digit tackle games. That is, he is clearly that team's leader on defense. Second and 11, bomb on the 29. Give is Holly, who has run And he was met and met rather forcefully. Somebody definitely got the message that time on the draw. And look at the effectiveness of Mondra Coley here. See, it's a delay. He looks at his fish, looked inside, gets to the outside, finds the move, another move right there, and then he just takes a shot. Boy, I tell you, that was a push and hit that time by Darn Alexander coming from the defensive backfield to put a big time stick on Coley. First and 10, ball up to 42. Nine minutes to go in the third quarter, trailing 13 to 7. Captain, for the end zone. Johnson, up and brought on the one sidelines, that's another first down. Hampton is running his pass out for, for Eon. Just a square out, let your big receiver get down there and take advantage of his height. Gets an underside quarterback, and that's all he do. Square out, gets quarterback, once again, a safe pocket, and Johnson delivers drive. So far, Broughton has five receptions for 126 yards. Eon back coming on that big touchdown catch in the first half. Ball now at the fourth floor. Will even Mary Johnson looking long has brought open overthrows him. Class case softening him up inside. Take advantage of him deep outside. Broughton got behind the secondary. It's almost like what happened at Howard University last week when you have receivers getting behind the secondary, and it was a week uh, a day near misses a near miss. That was clearly six points. Wow.
Roy Hodgson <laughs> might be just a little bit pumped up. Still, still playing a little bit too pumped. You know, because he just led his receiver too far that time. Johnson, total 23, 188 yards, trio of interceptions. 7 and 10, on a 44 for Hampton. Trailing 13, 27. Mayer, not much at all over the left side. Todd Greer on the stop. And you know, we haven't called his name as much as uh, Laycock was right this afternoon, but that just speaks volumes of the kind of pressure and, and, and the way that they're getting pressure from the defensive front. Hampton right now, now has it there long, but you got to isolate your bigger receivers against the smaller cornerbacks once again to take advantage. You can, uh, at least it, it appears now that Hampton has found weakness. They can attack to the outside using the height of their receivers against the smaller corners. 39, Mayer the long side back. Johnson, the pressure is on. He drops it off to Mayer, who gets about to the 42-yard line. Not nearly enough for a first down. He basically bailing out on that play. Well, they came with a blitz to William and Mary. That forced Johnson released that a little bit earlier than he wanted to. He let some people get some pressure on the back, and that's exactly what they do. They get pressure from Grenadier, and he just drops the ball out into the flat. And unfortunately for him, there were two defenders there once the reception was made, and that is why. It goes for not. Coach Taylor's going to roll the dice here on foot down. Fourth down and eight. 42 of William and Mary Hampton. Trail 27 30 and going for the first. Coley in motion. Johnson. That's Matt Williams along the right sideline. Matt Williams. The first down. And you know, William and Mary, if you, you drop fans, are going to be upset because they're Hampton giving the Hampton University. right now too much of a cushion and they're letting the big guys. Underneath, and that's simply what they would do to the near side. They go to the far side with it to uh, Williams that time. See, Johnson sets up, runs the square out to the far side line, and the, receiver, the cornerback is playing too far. I mean, Mike Beverly, who has an interception this afternoon, has got to be up there playing a little bit more aggressive. Well, Hampton is going to continue this march down the field with these. All at the 32. Johnson, play hand off to Cully. He gets to about the 29. Todd Redeer leading the charge for William and Mary on the stop. Once in the big fellas, the way they do it, they don't get up right quick enough, and that's why they stop. See, he wants to cut back. His linemen are in the way, and he runs into linemen at first before running the Grenadier and the rest of the traffic engine that stops. You know, this line, we have to start talking about the fact that they are consumed large. We talked about that, but what about T? We'll get that in a moment. After play. Johnson changing the play on second seven from the 29. The toss to there, who had trouble holding onto the ball. Did he keep it? He did keep it. Now back to that offensive line. Well, when does fatigue get in? I don't think fatigue is going to be a factor with this offensive front simply because of physical conditioning. It's a grueling regimen that Coach Taylor has with this team on under all season long. They run wind sprints after practice. They run wind sprints on after game. I mean, you look at these 305, 285, 305, 310, 310. That's a 1,500 pound accurate offensive front. They should be wearing out because, you know, across middle, they're 500 pounds heavy. 39. Warren Brooks streaking across the middle. Check that, Matt Williams. Oh, but look at the savvy that Roy Johnson shows on this play. This is pocket presence. This is caginess. Look at him. Here comes the pressure. Steps up. Has himself some time. Fires in the flat on the run across the middle. His receiver hauls it in. And it's a hand first down. Playing with a lot of confidence for the back. He's passed, you know, thrown three interceptions. And that's what you got to admire in Roy Johnson. 15 to go in third. First and 10 to 15. Johnson throwing under pressure. Jason Plummer was all over him on that. Hey, you know this just talking to his offensive lineman, in particular Mitchell Foreman there. Give me some time, baby. You give me some time because I can make things happen. That time, he just does a good job of avoiding the sack. Nothing fancy about that. And they're doing a good job once again in Montreal. Like being AC White territory. You know, play smart here. Got to get some points out of the situation. Trailing by a couple of touchdowns. That brings up Tech. Ten on the team. Mayor and Cole backs. Give Cole the deep end. There is the flag on the play. Cole gang tackle. And a pickup of maybe two, but that's be negated. We had some movement early on in the interior line. It's going to be interesting. And, and William and Mary wasn't in the neutral zone at the time the ball it was snapped. So the impression will be assessed him. So Hampton does dodge a bullet because it looked like there was some movement in the interior of the offensive line as well. So advantage Hampton on a call. All sides. Defense, five yards, replace second down. 
So that puts Hampton in their position. You mentioned ACY, considering his miss one after, he probably needs to get a little closer for a confidence booster. If there's a case, clearly Hampton's taking six points there. He's got a career long of 40 yards, but before they start entertaining that notion, he's going to come back. You can just uh, touch him here. It's critical for him. Second and five from the 10. Got in motion. Give it to Coley, who got away from one tackle, barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. He's stopped by Jimmy. They're trying to get a little blooper from a defensive back. They showed, like, they showed him a blitz up the middle. It came from the outside, and he ran right into it. The first guy doesn't get it, but the last two or three do. So a solid job of a defensive play on that time. Joe Hampton, a blitz up the middle, then coming from the outside. That's why I called him stop for a negative game. Third down, five, ball on ten. Mike there on that top. Johnson for the end zone. Broughton goes up, comes down with the touchdown. Hampton over Mike Bever. Well, Joe Tess said that his players had been in position and he thought they had the physical tools to make a play. And that was just a physical track time where Ward Rockley used his height on the ladder over Beverly, I believe that was, to get Hampton to within eight points. Huge one after coming up, AC Watt. Not fancy with that. The timing went to the corner of the zone, and he just wanted it a little bit more than the defense back did. Now AC White coming out with the uh, point after attempt. And this time he splits the up. As the Pucks are within seven with 4-1 to go here on Strong Field. 27 to 20. Roy Johnson signs. Rotten. Well, the Pirate fake can feel much better about the way things are going right now on Halloween 98, 22 27. Their Pirates within seven points after being down 27 point mark. Suffice to say, that there's no, been no tricks. This game has certainly been a treat this afternoon at Armstrong Stadium. Folks are having a good time. AC Wyatt set to kick off. Kyle Henning fields it. Gets to about the 35 yard line. That was Crozier on the on the turn. Was doing a little something like everything this afternoon. And why again continuing to struggle. A very short kickoff, which gives a offense that's operating quite effectively good field position. And now the Hampton defense has got to make play. William and Mary has not committed to turnover this afternoon. Hampton is going to have to make something happen. You might want to start showing blitz to drop him back in the coverage. Show Mike uh, Cook a little bit, uh, a different kind of look. Well, in fact, going into this game, William Mary had gone 16 consecutive without losing the ball. Now make it 18. He gives Ollie around the side. He gets out of bounds. I see Wyatt, the kicker for Hampton, is clearly upset with himself right now. Well, he knows that, you know, he's struggling just a little bit for whatever reason. Missed the extra point, then the short kickoff. I mean, those aren't the kind of things, those are the attention to details that you have to have when you're playing a game of magnitude. Everybody has to be on the same play of the same page of the book. They've also got to make those little plays that are so effective. Look at the Greyhound scoring drive for the Pirates team plays 80 yards, 32 and brought that 10-yard touchdown catch. Second and five, ball on the 42, William and Mary, they get to Ali. Gets about four yards on the carry before he's brought down by a host of players leading the way to Tom Brooks. Yeah, but the key play in that last drive was that fourth and ten where they converted it. That was huge. You will watch out again. Most of the gravity stumbles after he gets the ball and just runs through a couple of tackles. It's an incredible strength. And there's a Hampton up the front. You look, they got a good on their faces. Do you see it? I think that's concern. Third and one to 46. Lone setback is Ali, who's over 100 yards for the day. So my keeper appears to have enough for the first down. And that just shows a lot of confidence. This team is getting a great surge from Chris Mars, the junior, who's only 285 pounds at center. But well, he's just doing a good job on these short situations. His surge at the point of attack is giving Cook the opportunity to carry the ball for the first down. I mean, there's nothing nothing fancy going on here. He's third short, third, third in less than two situations. He's just diving over his big center. So William Mary trying to make his way into Hampton territory. Measurement is being made for the first down. Just short. And they're just short. If you Jimmy Lake, what do you do? You try it one more time? 
It is fourth and one. Ball on the 46. 27 20. William and Mary. The try offense will go for it. This is a test of the middle of Hampton. And I would imagine the park defense don't mind being in this position. Exactly. I know I. Don't know if the search got him over the line for the first down or not. Well, I tell you, it'll take a 4 2 spot to get him from first down here, Dwight. I don't know, because he was stuck twice. And it's be, it, it, it comes to a point where they, they blew the play dead. See, no search at the point of attack. Going right over his once again. Stop there. Stop there again. Spins. And I think he stopped for good. So it takes it. Wow. He didn't need much. And if he got it, he got it by that more. It is a first down for Willie Mary, barely by a quarter of the length of the ball. That second late whistle really turned Hampton in this situation. Because it looked like twice, Cook was stopped. And the fans of Wright Post expressing their displeasure. <laughs> In no son of the rings to try out first down at the 47 yard line. Working out of the shotgun. He's under pressure. And he really just simply trying to get away because Charles Preston was bearing down on him. Well, Preston, Preston's been in the back of the all afternoon, but he doesn't have anything to show for it. Again, here's the pressure. Preston beats his man and pulls the two hop brother in the general direction of the running back. So far, Cook. 29, 223 yards on day. Couple touchdowns, no interceptions, you know. Solid, steady hands. Made the plays when he had. Preston and Dom have climbed this season. 21 and a half sacks on hand. And they have been pretty much uh, held at bay all through. Second down, I'll get to call over the side. Is held by Dion. Hunt. Boy, Mr. Hunt's all over the place. Playing off blocks, showing that he, he's been downfield, stopping people and that plays. And here, he just lays off a block, steps into the hole, and boom. That's a big time stick. Hunt needs the team with 63 tackles coming into this game. 142 to go. The Dodgers trying to prevent Willie and Mary from getting another on the board. They're down by seven. Third from 49 of Hampton for William and Mary. Cook out of the shotgun. Looking downfield, threw it behind Dave Conklin in the area, turning spate. Well, Conklin has been coming across the middle thanks, thanks to some pick plays. Watch, let's, let's watch him. This is him, not, not fancy. He finds the center as you play. Get number 88 across there to clear out to the field. Conklin is wide open. It was a bad pass. Cook that time. So Hampton's defense has stepped up, and now the offense has a chance to uh, even the score. Mike Leach back punt for William Mary. Gets it off. And the ball is out of bounds, about the 10 yard line. So, as you mentioned, Mark Hampton's defense does its job. 27 20, giving the offense an opportunity to come back and even things as time's getting short in the third quarter. 115 to go here at Armstrong Field. Well, in the chess match between the two coaching staff, if you're on the William and Mary sideline, you got to tell your cornerbacks they've got to get closer. They can no longer give the cushion that they've been given to the Hampton receivers. Hampton receivers have been running immediate routes, square in, square out, and been very effective at using their physical attributes in the passing game in order for them to move football. Johnson ready the Pirates at the 10-yard line. Give and that time, the way look at the surge that the offensive line gets in the hole. You're talking about fatigue on their faces. Maybe it's a situation where they've had defensive fronts of William and Mary out on the field long enough that they may be starting to start show signs of fatigue in their own right. It's going to be interesting to watch how that, that that's a great to look at right now. The interior when Hampton's offensive line is up against William and Mary's defense front. That brings up second, third. Johnson going to the air, and he's going brought for first down bound with three seconds to go in the third quarter. And once again, the uh, Hassani camera is playing back a little too far. He runs about an eight-yard square out, and Roy Johnson delivers a strike. Solid catch that time by Broughton. Broughton is really stepped up here. He's uh, brought the team back with the long touchdown play. He caught the touchdown pass in the last drive. He is taking the burden of proof and put it on his shoulders, if you will. Once, once again, playing too far. Broughton, once again, he's got a big cushion out there. Johnson's looking to the air again. He's dropped this time. 
by Chris Paul gets to beats his man. He sure did, and that, that didn't have a chance to tell because of the individual effort that time by the William and Mary defender. Look, he played off a of block coming from coming right at you. Just bull rush off his man. Johnson tries to, you know, step his way out of the tackle, but this time it was to no avail. That will bring an end to the third quarter. That's the Pirates within 27 20. William and Mary. Hello, we're back here with William Mary is leading Hampton to 27 20. We're talking to the commissioner, Charles Harris of the MIAC. Tell me how important it is to play an out of conference game within your television pack for the MIAC. I think it gives you a couple things. Certainly, it gives you crossover visibility from the standpoint of spectators reviewing the game along the network. Additionally, it helps you prepare for the postseason. Certainly, can rank the regardless of the outcome of this game. If you ranked in the top 10. And it's, as we as we move towards postseason, the, the better quality competition we have out of the league, the better we're prepared for those postseason competitions. And how does this all play in as importance to the playoff season as far as Hampton being legitimate power when it comes to one double A ball? Well, I think it's a valid question. You know, certainly Hampton and Florida and both ranked in the top 10. Uh, again, a test uh, on, on, on a reasonable part of the women, I think 12, uh, gives you a very good standard to evaluate the quality of this team. And you know, they've made a number of turnovers during the course of the game. Clearly, there's a minute as we go into the fourth quarter. So it's a real test. Uh, uh, but uh, it, it is a we will continue to read the MIAC. All right, thanks for stopping and talking to us in Hampton. Trying to tie up this the fourth quarter. Back to you guys. Thank you, Joyce. Second and 20, and Roy Johnson running to for his life just about. He runs out of bounds, chased out by Raheem Walker at about the 20 yard line. 27 20, William and Mary. Very impressed with Waller. Just all we're showing quickness has struck me. You know, he plays the run extremely well. He also does a great job at putting pressure on the quarterback. I mean, those are those are all intangibles that make a uh, great defensive lineman. I go so far as to say that Mr. Waller is one of the great defensive linemen. I've certainly seen him in one double A on the season. Third and 15, ball on the 21. Coley and Mason. Johnson with time to go, looking deep for one to run. And it's hauled down by Sonny Cameron at the 26, 27 yard line. Mark, once again, you have to wonder where Cameron is playing and why. Rutten is still down. He's either dead tired or he's exhausted because he has been having his way with the secondary. Nothing fancy. It's just a fly pattern. He gets behind the quarterback and just simply outruns the defensive back to the spot and he hauls it in. A great tackle that time. Save a touchdown by Hassani Cameron. But again, they're giving too much cushion to the hand of receivers. Big fellas in place. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And you got to admire Roy Johnson for sticking with the artists been getting there. Brought and being tended to on the field by the medic staff right now. I am amazed. At, you know, when you study games like this, you, you start looking at trends, and the trend is that hand is often a defensive line to be able to stop running game of William and Mary. That hasn't happened. Hampton is a ball control team, not known for the big plays. They make a big play after big play get into this game. Let's look at Brock right quick. Again, look at the pocket presence. Surveying the field, steps up, picks out the time, and lost the strike online. If he had led him just a little bit, we'd have had another long touchdown. But as it stands, it is first a golden scoring opportunity. And Jimmy Lecock has to know right now that he is in for a Johnny Brook here this afternoon. Well, the young man that's being tended to right now has turned in quite a performance so far. Eight receptions, 195 yards, two touchdowns, Warren, and an athletic catch for the last touchdown. Will have been married 27 20. We'll check back with you and I'll stay with us. is on power. He appears to be okay. He just winded somewhat. Captain Pirates. 37 20. On move at the 28 line of William and Mary with 14 4 to go in the fourth quarter here on Strong Field in Hampton, Virginia. Roy Johnson, the two. Coley, pick up of maybe five yards. Now you can see the surge at the point attack that the hand offensive front beginning to get against the defense front of William and Mary. That time, you're going to look at guys drilled backward. Montreal Coley will go right up to the inside. And Broughton looks like he's uh, not doing so well right now. But I tell you, following the football like he did, it's going to hurt. 24 and a half yards. Impressive numbers for him this afternoon. Very impressive. Second three. Both at 21. They get him there. He picks him up the middle. That's a touchdown. 20 yards by Carino Mayer. Well, you see, Wayne, the offensive front does a great job of opening up a hole that's big enough for you and I the crew and go through the score touchdown and we have a new ball game ladies and gentlemen how about them pirates they just would not quit
John Field. He's very, very happy to attempt the pass to Chris Hunter off the wall. Up the middle, huge gate hole. He explodes into the secondary off the races. We talk about fatigue. That looks like our defense in front of that series, Dwayne. And AC on to tie game. The uprights, 27, 27, 13, 47 to go, and we ball game. Tight border area, up the next to Virginia. Jimmy Lake clearly worried about what's going on now. He's feared to have everything under control, and Big Mir gets ahead of Steve going up the middle mark and get out of his way. Good trap action at the point of attack that opened up the hole, and I, he just exploded through that time. The rim of Mayor, and we talked a lot about. Montreal Coley coming into contest. The way things are working out, Hampton got themselves with about five running backs at the end of the season with more than 250 yards rushing. Unprecedented in one double A. And I tell you, Hampton has got to be right now. The defense sees command on the previous side. The offensive line looks like they're taking control. If you're a hit power fan, you got to be feeling real good going into this last 13 27. All that chatter we just made about the offensive line of Hampton possibly being maybe they were sitting back and waiting there. Oh, sure. They were just collecting his ass waiting for dramatic finish. <laughs> Amazing. Four, turn, four turnovers in the first. Three turnovers in the first half. Three teams by Roy Johnson. I mean, one could argue that Hampton had held to the ball. Uh, they'd be out in front of this contest. Let's watch with interest if T.Y. kicks it off. See how far he gets it. Now that's easy wide. That's the easy wide. And William and Mary will take over at the three yard line. We're tied, 27, 27 at Armstrong Field. Wyatt with a little more skip and hit a step as he comes off the field, clearly pleased with the point and the kickoff. You know, Coach Taylor is about the catcher and, and, and the bucks and, and, and the heart that the team plays. You know, they, they, they're willing to go in and battle and, and we are uh, with each other as well. And they didn't quit, they believe in each other. And they put themselves into a position for a uh, bit of an upset. Now Mike Cook and Tribe go to work in the 20 yard line. Cook a shotgun. He gets tackle after tackle and picks up about eight yards. What team is, is and playing with as much emotion as Hampton is, is susceptible to cut back. He had to go up the middle, but he danced to the outside, and that's how he's able to run into the Hampton secondary. And, and as you can see, not as much a, not as much of a pep in his study longer after taking some of the punishment that the Hampton defense has been putting on. Ned Smith the long setback as Lecoq continues to do his running back. Should be enough for first down or very close. It's gonna be interesting. But again, hand defense steps up, shuts him down. On the run play. Once again, the back is trying to cut the far side and hand did a good job in pursuit to seal it off. So it is a first down. So that was what the doc ordered for the drive. Just wanted to get a first down out of this drive. Move chain, get a little bit of offensive confidence because you have a very talented off crew. Ball on the 31, Cook in the shotgun. Rozier and Cotton lined up left side. He's looking to the left, and he has Rozier, who's out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Knocked up by Deion Hunt. Marvin, Marvin Adams was also out there and covers that time. But Rozier has got to be the one player that Hampton has to fear, if you will, because he's been able to get into the second. He's made a number of plays this afternoon. That time they were able to control him, but again, nice gauge, a nice gain on first down. Let's check in with Joyce Jackson. Injury update on one broad. Joyce. Yes, guys, quick update. Warren brought and he landed awkwardly on his neck and his back. And for a few seconds, he lost feeling, but he got back. He's okay, and he's ready to cheer his team on. Back to you. Thank you, Joyce. Ali, back to the lineup. Does not go very far. Dion Hunt. We're beginning to say that name with frequency now. Dion Hunt, arguably the best linebacker in the entire MEAC. Just is all over the field and just continues to make plays. He's great at pass coverage, but here he shows that this is stop and run. He steps to the hole, gets his big arms around the running back, and hauls him back. Still, William Mary is unable to pick up a first down. Ball to 43, William and Mary. Ali is a long set back. And gets called. Head running on. But Jamal Brook quickly closed the hole. Knocked him off balance. That's what's called run support. Stepped up in the hole before beating the excuse me, beating the running back. The spot wants to dance to the outside on. Watch it right here. You see Ali is gonna dance to the near side, but nothing doing that time as the higher defense step in there and knock him off his pin. Look at the job in the pit. You know, the try, trying to seal to the outside, to the inside, and the running back dances to the near side, and he almost picked up on the first down. William and Mary trying to get back into Hampton territory. Ball on the 48. 
Flags everywhere. There was movement. I was on the turf. I play like that. Some kind of offensive of infraction. It's just a matter of home initiated. All right, so now, full start on the offense, five yards, replay second down. He's getting a little tight. So that's against William and Mary. Overzealous trying, you know, Hampton's getting good pressure up front, making the offensive lineman think a little bit. So just ahead of the second. It's amazing with the, the third rated pass Erica that William and Mary has committed to run this drive. Interesting bit strategy. Well, we should consider that we don't know his left arm whether or not it's beginning to bother more because he was uh, second and ten, ball to 43. 11.07 going the game. We're tied 27. Active pass drops it across the middle to Mike Lee, who is taken out of bounds by Dion Hunt with some help from Jess Coleman. How significant is Coach William and Mary's fortune? So look at this, number one all time with 55 touchdown pass completion percentage, passing yards, you name it, he does. He makes, he makes their offense go. I mean, he he is the gauge. He's the the straw that stirs the drink, if you will. But again, when they needed to this afternoon, they put the ball in the hands of the ground game, and they've been successful thus far. 200 yards on the day for him in the air. A couple of touchdowns. More importantly, no interceptions so far. He gets it over the side. For the first down. We in there. There he. There's the coach of the Hampton University defense, and he would be a little bit perplexed with the ability of William and Mary to run the football. Started in the early game, moving the ball, running up. The now they've been able to get to the outside. So Hampton's defensive unit has to be playing. You know they're kissing right now. They have not been able to find the key to put clamps on the run unit and it's the running game, which is doing the most damage. Pirates defense. First and 10 46. Leach in motion, William and Mary. Nesmith back, pull up in the throw. Drops it off off the middle to Leach. Who breaks the tackle? Mike Leach on the reception. Well, look, you're looking at the advantage of those pick plays, you're letting receivers who's effective getting downfield clear. And what they're doing is using short, immediate routes, running backs coming across the middle. And that's what they do. They clear out receivers, Conklin and, and Rozier. And that leads running back to come over to the flat. A good job of making the reception. Mike Leach carries the drive to another first down. William and Mary methodically on the move by 27-27, 10-16 to go here on Strong Field. Leach again motion. This time to bring Nesmith, and he gets absolutely nothing thanks to Travis Coleman. And Coleman does a good job because if he can get to the outside and turn over, he's off races and it may have six points. Solid defense play that time by Hampton. See what Nesmith? He's going to get to the outside. See, he's gets a point of attack. But nice defensive play that time. And he's knocked off his pins by Travis Coleman. So the freshman steps up and makes a huge play. That's the first negative yards play. The first down on the drive for the drive. Ball 33. Now hitting motion. Lee again. And Travis Coleman tries to but does get him bounds. And see, this is not fancy. It's a safe route. You line up in the slot the far side, convince everybody to play, and then you roll that area, look back to the near side, there's nobody out there but your receiver. See, look in the screen. There's no defense around there. Just looking for somebody to hit. And it goes out of bounds. Methodical drive. Great word, Dwayne. It, it, it's almost meticulous the way the tribe is moving on the hand to defense. You know, Leach, who has the 43 yards received, is 6'4", 238 pounds. Coleman is 6'1", 185. You imagine Travis was hoping he wouldn't turn it back on him. <laughs> First and ten, ball twenty. Throw again. I'm getting short when this dropped off the hitting. The first of tackles before Dion Hunt and Jamal Brooks bring him down. Hunt did a good job though of picking up extra yards because it looked like the linebackers had rotated out there to stop him. And he just made a little stutter step moving, carried it on a little farther. See, great quarterback to sip. Looks off where he wanted to go, comes back to the far side, and there's nobody out there once again. See, great move that time. It takes a couple guys to bring him down. The first player has to make a play in critical drive like this. Savvy, solid, steady receiver, spectacular, but just makes plays. That brings up second and short ball on the 13th. Three to go. We give to Ali. He has the first down and a bit more. And we talked about fatigue, Dwayne. It appears that the Hampton defensive front is beginning to show signs of fatigue and unright. They've been on the field an awful lot this afternoon. And it's been a physical game down in the trenches. And then, look. He breaking, breaking through tackles. Nobody's able to stop anybody. Running backs bouncing off defenders and getting extra yards. Those are all signs of fatigue. And you know, it was Vince Lombardi that said, fatigue makes cowards of us all. And this is uh, Hampton's defense front showing a lot of fatigue. They're definitely tiring right now. 
First and goal from the seven yard line. Good motion. Give to Ollie over the right side. And he gets into the end zone. They're really running over Marvin Adams. So Willie McCray regains the much to the league's consternation. Well, his defensive unit is like they're tired right now. Once this is the number one rated defensive unit against the run in America. And frankly, we'll run for on that drive. I'm nothing fancy about it. They completed a couple of short routes, but it was plays like this. Ali takes it away from the hole that he was supposed to go up to inside. This is to the outside. Throws his shoulder down at about the two and barrels it into the end zone. Solid hard run, Ali. Stepping up, making the plays he had to for the success of that drop. Here's Derber for the point after. It is so William and Mary back on top, 33-27, 7.59 to go here at Strong Field. Alonzo Lee, right? Alonzo Lee, defensive coordinator for Hampton University. Very upset after last score. You saw just exhorting his troops on to get going. They're 7.59 goal. This is not time for them to get down themselves. The kickoff. This field to 30. Westbrook with a short kickoff. This will result in good field position for them. Laycock is not happy at all with that kickoff. It's it was unclear. Yeah, it was almost like that was a design play or something. Great scoring drives, 13 plays, 8 yards, 541, the time 7 yard touchdown run by Ali. Solid teams get the ball in a situation like that. It was a ball control, time consuming drive. At a good team, will, a good team has, makes plays and forces the opposition to make big in order to beat them. And that's what William and Mary's done. And once again has to answer William and Mary Johnson in a career day. 284 yards through the air. That is the best. Of course, he had those three interceptions here. His back to pass. Looking very long. Just overthrows Mark Adams. Boy, you gotta admire Willie. You take that, man. You gotta admire the aggressiveness, boy. They just won't quit. Just when you think it's about time for him to go about the business of playing ball control, they go up top. Once again, they got an advantage in the skill positions. They one on one coverage downfield. Johnson leads his receiver with just a little bit too much, or it would have been six points. You talk about the roof going off here. Man, they connect on that one. This place would have run. 7 10 from the 39. Long set back is Mayer. He gets the call left side. Barrels his way down for first down inside William Minary territory. Well, now you start seeing, now you start talking about the effect of the endurance and physical conditioning of the heading defensive, of offensive front. Pardon me. You know, up in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, work out, just conditioning, the off season. And what you see right now is the offensive line opening a huge gate hole that allows the running back to bust up in there, pick up big stick. Good job, Karima Mayer. Johnson looking to go to the air again. He has been into Next catch, he's up a couple of yards and is brought down about the three, the 42 yard line. I'm watching Warren Brunson right now and he's just not moving as well as he was early on. This is a great catch by Williams that time, turning his body in there to a haul that catch in. You know, let's talk around here. He could have been an All American candidate. They had moving the receiver about a year or two ago. Second and three. The trail stuck most. Ball in 42. Johnson dropped it off to Bear. He has the first down. See, that's just sad. Field general shit right there. Find yourself some time, you know, step outside, realize that, hey, I have to run to make this happen. See, sets the pocket, wants to go on. Can't do that. Comes it off, in here flat the mayor. Mayor just takes it up, picks up the first down. Solid hit play by Johnson. Retail two quarters, two halves for the quarterback. Totally for quarterback in the second half before Johnson. 6 16 to go. First and 10 at the 30 of William and Mary. Trail Scott in motion. Give us a call. Second man through. And he is stopped. This game by Jason Fleur. Turn it through real fast and shoot it, Wayne. I mean, you know, uh, okay, I'll take your best shot. I've got one right back coming at William Mary with 26 first downs this afternoon. Hampton 22. And ironically, there was such a disparity in that statistic in the first half. Hampton's offense is certainly getting gear here after the intermission. 10 6 from the floor for the Pirates who are trying to draw even once again with William and Mary. Coley. Johnson has the lead. 
Lee Usher, directed traffic. And he is pushed out of bounds. Jimmy Sernaro, directed traffic. And he gets outside the pocket to Roy Johnson. And he's talking to Brock right now. Say, hey, throw that block with some force. And I'm able to pick up some more yards. See, look, he's outside. Throw block, throw that block. Johnson wanted to give him a little move ahead to the inside. And perhaps pick up another 10 yards. But since Brofton didn't hold it. He wasn't able to uh, pick up yardage. Nonetheless, it is a first 10 for the Pirates. Ball 26. Something. Play fake. And just throws it away. Williams was in the general vicinity. You have to really be generous. Look at the pressure that gets this time. Pressure to the left of him, pressure to the right of him, and trying to make something happen. Heads up, just getting rid of the football. William and Mary was trying to lobby to get an intentional grounding call, but there was no possession. You know, he was not in the grasp, was Johnson. So that was the, that's what argument fell on the fears. Mike Holder, the man for William Mary, pressure. Johnson, now that brings up second down and 10. Ball at the 26 spot, 13 to play. Hearts trailing to 427. Johnson was looking for Broughton, who had it briefly. Darvin Alexander defending on the play. He's doing a good job that time of sitting, and sitting tight with his, uh, with the guys responsible for in coverage. A month of Sundays back to survey the field for Roy Johnson, and then DB just does a good job breaking on the ball. And Brofton is clearly not moving the same uh, after the injury. I mean, he's not running his uh, route with the, with the confidence or and touch on the toughness that he showed, and I believe he's still a, a very, very wound. This may be the biggest third down of the game so far for Hampton. Williams across the middle. And see, he's not feeling good at all as he tries to get that. It was brought a, a tremendous catch by Rodgers. Apparently, fell on the ball once again. Look at Johnson, box himself a little bit more time. You're the safety, the ball's coming right at you. Great look, guys, and a tremendous catch by Broughton. Hampton first step. I amazing. This is a this is a good old fashioned way fight. Uh, bottom line. These two teams playing just the second time they began the series last year. They're located in the same geographic region, and it will not continue beyond this year, at least in the foreseeable future. 4.40 to go, 27-34, William and Mary, 10, 15, and it's cut off the middle of And he gets to about six-yard line. Well, you can see just the... Hampton is out physically, and William and Mary at the point of attack. Look at the surge that the offensive line, and then Montreal Coley just hides himself behind those big and then five busts into the secondary, picks up about eight yards. Look at it again. Coley just has the hole barreling over people. You can't tell me that the defense unit of the church is not getting tight right now. The beef is definitely paying off right now. Seven two. Mayor over the left side. Should have enough for the first down. 351 to go and the clock's still running. Hands got to get a touchdown in this situation. Let's take a look at this one from the end zone. Coming right at you. You now see, look, he tries to come back. Look at the surge of the offensive line at the point of attack. Doing what they call shield block. When you to the inside and shield the guy that's blocking to the near side. And the back is back behind you. So now first and all for him, the biggest drive of the year. 11,000 on their feet. 3-3-6 to go in the game. Point of attack and another one at the goal line to go for the six. That's stuff you can't teach right there. Sooner or later, guys got a one in a big game. And look at it. this is just a guy who points it. Pop right there. What's another tackle? Legs still moving. Breaks another one. And he's into the zone. My Grenadier actually had a hand on him. Appeared to have been brought down, but Coley was not going down. Right on for the extra point. Splits the right hand. Once again, 34 34 at Armstrong Shields. Six, 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 six,